I always have the music. <laughs> Wait, did I freeze or am I good? You're good. Oh. Yeah, you're fine. Got it. Just making sure I'm okay. This is terrible tonight. It's all my fault. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or how late you are to your own podcast. Whether you're SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hello, sweet, but we're lucky enough. And Aaron gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is not Chris. This certainly isn't Chrissy. Well, I am Jeff. And I'm mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another Swayze episode of our podcast. It is 152, recorded on August 19th, the day after Patrick Swayze's birthday. Hey, Mental, Swayze be with you. Swayze be with you. Uh, he would have been 68 today. Uh, so if you're not driving the car, grab that bingo card and may the Swayze be with you and the odds ever be in your favor. Bingo card link in the show notes. Mental, other than waiting for me to show up, what do you wait? What are you working on? So, all right. So, what? Well, yeah. Normally, I'm not this quick. I um, I have been trying to expand my fitness program because running does take a lot of time. So, I wanted to get used to the idea of two days a week riding my bicycle to work. So, I had to bring the RV home to do some work, and I went to ride the bicycle back to. Uh, the base to get my car and what is should be just right about an hour trip turned into the two hour cryptacular the most wonderful endurance style bicycle ride so 30 minutes into it the rear cartridge the gears disintegrates just completely ah. explodes on the back i was gonna say either so I, the either you got hit by a car or your or your your bike broke. Yeah, the bike broke. So I, I get it. I, 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 knowing that I had bought a used bike and I was already tempting fate, I had brought two small crescent wrenches with me. That was the entirety of my tools. So I get the whole thing back together and I tighten the cartridge up by hand as much as I could. It lasts exactly 30 more minutes and falls apart again. <laughs> so I've got to rebuild it. It is a 12 mile ride. I had to rebuild this cartridge twice on there and it took me almost two hours. Not to be deterred, I threw this bicycle, got it back to the garage, got everything tightened up and built properly and then threw it in the car, drove it to work yesterday to ride home. Left my car at work. Bicycling home from work, flat tire. Uh, yeah, unrepairable yeah it's great yeah so not so bad Und undeterred i will try again tomorrow uh i like riding my bike as a workout and uh if you ever see me like during all this covid time i did not grow a covid beard because and this is for the <laughs> this is for the youtube listeners because right here right here right there no beard will grow because i was riding a used bike and the pedal broke at about 500 miles an hour. I went over the handlebars and drug my face on the pavement. So this is as luscious as it gets. Anyway, is that all you got? I That's all I notes. got. Well, and I, uh, I, well, you know what? Hey, we could do this because I, I actually reconfigured my sim rig a couple of days ago, bought a, uh, a nice stand for uh, my monitor. So now I can get those off my work desk and um, that repositioned the sim, which caused me all kinds of problems on Monday with uh, being heard. But, you know, we'll talk about the, uh, the E1R Monday night race league here in a bit. Yeah. Cool. Uh, should I go? You should. We're not going to, we're going to skip Chris and Chrissy, write that down. If you have <laughs> skip Chrissy on your bingo card, officially you can check it off. Uh, so we are, uh, one weekend away from work from, I'm sorry, from race. And, uh, as always the weekend after race, I do all of the yard work on the planet because my grass in front yard and backyard looks like Jumanji when you let it go for two weeks and it rains a lot. 
So I was mowing and mowing and clipping and I, the, the pool turned gray. I, I basically spent an entire weekend on everything that's outside my house. Um, and I also took the day off today, which is why I completely forgot that it was podcast day and showed up to my own podcast 40 minutes late. Uh, thank you for waiting for me. I would have ditched me. Uh, <laughs> we couldn't because I don't have permissions to record. No, no. Which well, you could have done on Skype. You could have switched to Skype. Anyway, uh, so I, I took the day off and I did floors all day. So if you hear me sniffing and blowing my nose, it's because I have been hard at work on the table saw pretty much all day. So, but it looks great. And I ran out of floor wood. So I guess I'm done for a little while. <laughs> you don't have any wood. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, yeah. So Chris and Chrissy are not here. We mentioned that. Uh, where are they going? They're going to New England somewhere to like hike. They're going the hiking. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They're, uh, they're getting away from it all. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, so mental and I would be a terrible show. All we talk about is Teslas and Porsches. So we brought in some guests. With us tonight is the very accomplished crew of the most successful car in the history of Three Pedal Mafia. Where do we start? Do we start with the wrench? Or let's start with the wrench. With us, <laughs> Wart Burger Thief, Cancer Ass Kisser, A. A. Ron. Kicker. There's a little, little bit of a difference in the. Uh, Did I say kicker? kicker? I'm no. sorry. I meant to say <laughs> kicker. I'm still sniffing. Hey, Aaron, what are you working Nothing on? Glue. As little as possible. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm the wrench. And that's what I do for a living. So I'm working on everybody else's crap, eight to five, Monday to Friday. So as little as possible. I, I, that's about it. Just, just to un- understand a little bit more about you, what kind of derelicts are in your fleet? And My what- fleet. <laughs> How many Panthers my, do you currently fleet, have? I have one. Um, I'm on my second Panther, the 97 Grand Marquis. I call it the Granny Marquis. Um, <laughs> canvas top, the whole nine, big chrome hubcaps. Um, and, and other than that, that pretty much sits now that I've got my 04 Toyota Sequoia. Because what, what happened to the Toyota green one? Toyota is life. I thought you had two of them. Um. I, I gave the green one away to somebody that was going to come racing lemon oh. and they wound up uh, buying a roundy rounder instead. I thought uh, for sure you'd have at they least raced two or three Panthers hanging around I, your house. Unfortunately, I live in an apartment complex. I can't keep all that stuff. Oh. I do have vehicles stashed at other people's houses. My motorcycle sitting at a buddy's house. You know, um, my <laughs> other one was sitting at his house for a little while. I had I had the uh, the quarter million mile WRX sitting at work for a little bit, but I had to uh, thin the herd a little while for a little I, while. I get it, thin in the herd. Someday I'll try it, but I definitely understand it. Well, since you're not wrenching on anything, maybe Dave's wrenching on stuff. Dave, Uncle Dave, Car Cressida, cat oh cat. I don't know. Explain what? who you are. I was gonna say captain, owner. I don't know what you are. Owner, knucklehead, dumbass, <laughs> idiot for buying it. No. Um, uh, what have I been working on? This weekend was small engine repair for me. Uh, Bobbin's generator crapped out or actually wouldn't start during that last storm, whatever its name was, and uh, needed a carburetor. So we finally got that in and I worked on that. And then there was uh, fixing the lawnmower, something that you know nothing of, Jeff. <laughs> uh, I am the small engine Mangala man. They are all experiments to death in my book. Yeah. And then uh, other than that, uh, today my uh, video card showed up. So I was putting that in shortly before we started waiting for you. And uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> are, are, are we looking at you on the gaming computer? Yes. Ah, very nice. Very nice. All right. Out of all of my brothers, this one is my favorite. Yeah, I'm trying to get off that list. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what are you working on? Um, other than my D&D campaign, um, 
moving stuff over to my home off to my new office. That's why there's blank shelves behind my head. Um, my game collection is migrating over there. And I find myself newly used car shopping for my older son. So got a ninety seven grand marquee. You know, you can't go <laughs> wrong with a grand marquee. Mm mm. The tank. Yeah. Run forever. I was gonna say, uh, let's see, is it reliable? And it'll keep you from being a grandfather for at least a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It, it is is it the average Panther reliable? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Is it cheap to maintain? Except for the gas. Yes. Uh, he needs fuel efficiency, unfortunately. Uh, no, or no, unfortunately. No, no, no. I don't know. Well, now's the time that we usually go on to news and notes. Matt, you got anything? I do, actually. So you guys remember last September when a, a whole boatload, and, and, and incidentally, that's not a euphemism, an actual ship, an entire ship containing nothing but Hyundais caught fire and rolled off the coast of Georgia? Yeah, it's been a year. It's still there. Uh, it's actually like they've got people posting vacation pics on there. A piece from Eric Marquise on Jalopnik explains the reason, and you've already guessed it, it's... The Rona. The Rona's kept the ship out there. The problem is once they start cutting up the MV Golden Ray, they, they can't stop. So hurricanes, pandemics, all that stuff throws a wrench into that process. So now you've got these post-apocalyptic Japanese anime style vacation photos of people doing selfies on the beach with a shipwreck in the background for the last year off the coast of Georgia down near Savannah. But it's actually a real really interesting article you'll learn a lot about salvage operations and the link is in our show notes very nice very nice uh I hey, any of those in... cars for sale my son needs one <laughs> <laughs> no as a matter of fact when the when the when the the mazda ship turned over there was a lot of stuff that people wanted out of it because it had uh, Mazdas and Mitsubishis and there were like all kinds of Evos in it that people were like, Give me, uh, I'll turn into a race car. And they wouldn't let them out. They, sh- they crushed them all. Yeah, I, I imagine that they don't want the liability. Yeah, even of... ones that didn't seem to be like underneath the water, they, they crushed them all. Yeah, but it's, they sit out there in the ocean and in all that salt water and salt air. It's probably not a good thing. Yeah. I put this in news because it's not actually our kind of races, but it is a race report. Uh, uh, it, it, NASCAR held like four races in the same weekend on the Daytona road course. Yeah, almost the same exact track as the 24 hours at Daytona. They had a second smaller chicane that they added. Uh, but better yet, and this is, the, this is why I tuned in, and I, I did tune in and watch every second of it. Every single driver for every single one of the four races could only do one event. And because of the global pandemic, there was no testing time and no qualifying. They just qualified in order of points. So the very first lap of every single race was the very first time any of those drivers had had those cars on those courses in a stock car. Uh, the Xfinity race, the, the, the lower of the series, D- uh, Dave, Aaron, I know you guys, you, you, do you watch it? I just but, saw the highlights. Uh, it was a total shit show. <laughs> it was a shit show. <laughs> that first turn was hilarious. Yeah, the Xfinity guys just didn't. They said, oh, I could go fast. They're all trying to get a ticket to the show. So, you know, the thing about the, the, the lower classes is you have to win. In the upper classes, winning has nothing to do with your paycheck. What it has to do is whether or not sponsors want to be a part of you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Right. There's, yeah. there's guys that get paid more to finish in last than some guys, you know, get paid. Absolutely. Like yeah. yeah. So. so my employer's getting uh, good good press for their uh, lots of exposure <laughs> oh, I for forgot their you worked sponsorship. For Xfinity. Yeah, whatever. I, and actually, I didn't actually watch the Xfinity. I only saw the highlights, but I did watch the Cup. Uh, the, the Cup race was great. It actually was some good racing. Uh, yeah. They were they, – they took their time. They, they – uh, from what we hear, all of the top drivers basically texted each other and said, uh, we're not going to look like jerk-offs, so let's just take our time on lap one. And uh, that's what happened, and they, they looked great. It was good competition, uh, almost yellow-free, uh, at least incident yellow-free. There was a couple here and there, but nothing huge. Uh, Mentally, you got something on this? Well, they did, they did have the red flag, uh, but I was watching the first couple of laps, and I've, I've run Daytona twice with uh, Champ Car. 
And in the road course, not so much turn one, but um, turn three, four, and that is the, the ones where you, uh, right before you exit back onto the main straightaway, I went faster through those corners in a 20-year-old Honda Accord than those cup cars were coming out of that. Yeah, yeah. They, right. they, they took their time in the beginning. They got, they got faster, I, I will say. Uh, but I also, don't know that, what the... that is a we've, – we've all run in our Monday Night League. We've run that road course. And that the, – the turn to the right before you go back onto the banked oval, which is uh, turn one. When it's it's a little it. sketchy. Yeah, and, it's tight. Uh, they, were, they were all – just those cars aren't meant to do that. They were slowing down to 40 miles an hour. Yep. Yep. There's 3,400 pound sleds with brakes that really aren't quite cut out for it. So. No, no, no. Those, those brakes are made to haul you from 200 to 150 in a manner of, you know, milliseconds. Yeah, a track mm-hmm. meet. They are not meant to wall you around. From, at from 90 to 30 <laughs> is not what they're designed for. Yeah. I, I have to say that the press has been excellent. Uh, so they're, they're talking about maybe putting it on each time. Dave, you got something? Well, I was something? just going to say, you now the, uh, the iRacing had updated the Daytona track a few weeks ago when they found out about this. Extra and chicane. Lo- that extra chicane. And a lot of uh, a lot of the NASCAR drivers were using it to yep. get as much practice as they could. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, if they go to road courses more often and they get rid of the freaking competition caution, which I still don't understand, and it still drives me insane when I'm watching it. I, like, literally want to turn off the race every time there's a competition caution. Uh, I would watch – I would watch a lot more NASCAR if they did a lot more road courses. Well, I, I, the only time I, I watch NASCAR is road courses and yeah. short tracks. So. And I think in that one, you really started to see, because if you ever have the opportunity, and I mean, Jeff, you've been trying to go for years, go down to the Rolex 24. If you go down there and you get that grassroots motorsports golden ticket, you'll literally bump into NASCAR guys on their way to the car. Yeah, and a lot and, of the a lot of the head got, lead guys who were on the race were actually at the twenty four or have done the twenty four. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, completely different cars. No active arrow at you know that that you see out of the IMSA, the open top stuff. But certainly, at least they were familiar with the nuances of the pavement and the cores. And oh, okay, this is this turn's going to kick this way, and this turn's going to kick that way. And yeah, the bus yeah. stop was hysterical. Watching them forced forced through the bus stop, I I giggled every time because they were just. They were miata ing it yeah, through that. They were absolutely. <laughs> there is a lot less grass in, yeah. in the apexes. Uh, I, this isn't in the show notes, but I wanted to mention of it because you know I'm a Nissan Titan guy, or at least I bought one and I own one. Uh, the Nissan Titan is being, a dis, uh, 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 I guess, removed from the Canadian market. I, I, I was going to say they're. They're still making them. They're still going to make them in America. But uh, this doesn't bode well for Nissan or the life of the Titan. Uh, Canada is obviously a big truck market, and they don't sell a whole lot up there. Uh, yeah. So who knows if the Titan's going to stay in the U.S. or not. Uh, Nissan claims it is, but we all know that uh, Nissan might shut its doors like any minute now. So uh, link in the show notes. <laughs> Uh, they're basically saying that it ha- currently in America, it's 1.2% market share with 12,000 units sold, which is down from 31,000 units sold in, in the U.S. market base. So I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to be. I think Ford around. sold 31,000 F-150s while like, we were doing this show. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, that's something to do with the small uh, gas tank they put in them. Yeah. Uh, F's in chat. F's in chat for the uh, Canadian Titan. A. A's in uh, chat. A, A's in chat. Yeah. <laughs> upcoming races. Anything upcoming? There's there's actually nothing. Uh, this has been a busy month, and October is looking to be busy, or rather, September is looking to be busy again. But right now, we're good. We got. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. Cool. Uh, recent results. We talked about it last week. Uh, I've been talking about it all week. I watched all weekend. Lucky Dog, Randy, who let the dogs out at Charlotte Motor Speedway on the – are they? do they call that the Roval? I don't know. Uh, they the do. Charlotte Roval. Uh, yeah, Loose Cannon Racing 
ra- they, they had they had three days of racing and it was kind of weird because saturday it was nice and short but then sunday they ran like 10 hours from noon to 10 p.m friday they so, partnered with jayzilla track days and they'd gotten a track day on it so and, yeah and, and that, that that all counted which was nice because it gave everyone kind of a chance if you've there if you've never run charlotte it's it's a good track. It's a very technical track, but if you get out of shape, you're in a little bit of trouble, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so uh, race one was Loose Cannon Racing, followed by the Baltimoreans, and third was Apocalyptic Racing. Lots of Lemons people were down in there racing. Uh, race two, uh, the long one, this was the Sunday 10-hour, was Loose Cannon again, but they were running the Super Dog class, so you don't actually get to win, I guess. Uh, that was the, that was some kind of Porsche, wasn't it? Some kind of, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Some kind of, some sort of 911 GT three ish thing. No, so, I don't know. I, th- I think you confused that with AR, but. <laughs> no, I think it was, wasn't it? Oh, okay. No, never yeah. mind. All right, cool. Yeah. Their lap so they just wanted much to run. faster. Yeah. So uh, Apocalyptic took it. Uh, they technically won, even though they were second, because the other one was out of class with a new build. It was a Z, right? Uh, yes. followed, two, yeah, I don't know. It's 280, but it was, a, it was that generation, uh, followed by the Baltimore ons again. And then AOA motorsports. We don't know AOA. We know everybody else on this list. Uh, a bit mm-hmm. of listener feedback. Alex Levinson was running with the Baltimore ons and they had it up and down weekend. Uh, his Miata got hit in the parking lot and no, it wasn't Yuri who hit it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but on Saturday they finished first in class quote this is from alex keep listening to each 3 p.m's bullet points each and every one and you taught me so much and he passed passed it on uh they used all of our advice to their advantage i can't imagine that it actually helped them but he claims it did (laughs) uh they didn't have to be the fastest they just had to be the smartest and we're definitely going to talk about that that might come up on this race weekend or on this race show uh, I do have to say another big shout out from uh, listener feedback from the race. The, uh, the, the garage heroes in training gave a big shout out to Carl and the rest of the Baltimore morons for helping them with their E36. They said yeah. they, they, they needed some help because their wrenching skills were not uh, on fleek. And uh, Carl came over and they said they really learned a lot watching Carl kind of diagnose what was wrong with their E36? Yeah, and it was uh, uh, also Race Bar was down there playing Baby Shark on there, and the Race Bar actually tried to get L, or got El Jefe running as well. Nice. So another, yeah, it was a it, go back and check all the stuff on your whatever your social media is. It was a, a a good event, and Jeff, I haven't had a chance to ask you what did you think of El Jefe's new livery because I liked I it. loved it. I lo- I. I watch the video of El Jefe going around the oval like 12 times. That is the (laughs) second best thing to happen in endurance racing, like in the last month. Yeah. All right. So that was, that was great. We, uh, we actually missed talking about it last week. So I apologize, but AER was at Lime Rock this weekend. 49 cars. I totally missed that. I had no idea. Yeah. 49 cars, 23 of them were BMWs. Boring. 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 Uh, nine Miatas, one Honda, seven Porsches, and an 86 RX-7. So uh, Random Vandals Racing took the overall. Second was SJS Motorsports. Third was s Racing. The Johnson Toyota, the Red Solara that we did battle with at Connecticut, and they had teething problems because it was a new build. They got it out there, and they were third in class one at AR at Lime Rock. So congratulations to those guys. I'm glad to see I think see they're them. actually running an FRS, a Scion FRS in AER. They have a third car. Okay, yes. I, I, uh, and I may have looked that wrong. I, I saw pictures on their page of the Solara at the track, but that may have not been the one. It may have been their, uh, their, yeah, their FRS. I can't yeah, imagine. painted the same. Is it? I can't imagine that that Solara not being faster than that FRS. That Solara was quick. The red one. The, the red black, one. The black one is a black one is ship. fast yeah. too. But the red ones seem to be faster. It just was mm-hmm. in the pat in the pits more. Yeah. 
So, well, probably everything that they learned on the uh, the green one that they put into the red one <laughs> over years of development. Yeah, okay. uh, and also this past weekend, Lisa, uh, our comment spare, our, our buddy commentator from our Sunday night events with the Bearded Sim Racer, she was the sole person running the Lemons Hell on Wheels California Rally. So your winner on points was the Holland Cush and a 91 Cushman Holster. And why? Hats off to you. <laughs> for doing a was it did they get a thousand miles they were pretty close they were a little i think they were a little over a thousand yeah it was it's in a just... freaking cushman a was it three wheel or four wheel no it was the four wheel it was one. the four wheel. yes but uh so also going through that you had your runner-up was the highway patrol hillbillies and a 59 volvo p544 third on points silly hats only in a 67 mercedes-benz 200d that's the one with the uh, tail fins he can flasa yeah get on the bus was the putt pirates and a 65 volkswagen bus org choice was a minty z24 uh, Cavalier 88 Z24 Wait. convertible, Cavalier Z24 convertible, and random access stupidity was Mad Dog and the Batman in a 99. Oh. Now, I did actually get some feedback from Lisa Sims. So, you know, hey, you know, what was going on with that? So, the Cushman belongs to a guy named Grant. I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Warren Tendike. And I think that Jeff, I take it back, it was a three wheel death trap. He has a seven gallon tank. He averaged 30 miles per gallon. The engine is a Daihatsu ED10 sitting at a 60 degree slant with a scoop for a side mounted radiator. He has a 160 amp alternator. He had to rebuild the carb, including a convoluted automatic choke and a CB with an in cab speaker so he could kind of hear. Broke his axle after the second or third stop, went to a budget place, had to replace it, lost the air scoop someplace down a dirt road where he drove a three-wheeled Cushman, wore a helmet in 100 degrees, just oh. in case some highway patrolman felt like being a jerk. Uh, the 88 Cavalier, perfect interior, had the waffle rims. Now, uh, most of you guys were in high school when I was in high school. Tell me that the Z24 convertible was the ride, like the you know, captain of the cheerleading team drove that. So it's got that. Hold one. on a second here. I have a picture of the Cushman. Let me Bust it out. this up. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's got headlights. It's got taillights. It's got some kind of external cage going on. Oh yeah. boy. Yeah. Just all kinds of a bad idea. Yeah. I, I also have a picture. Click on click on that Z24. Tell me yeah, that Z24 what, is not meant to. Next. Mm. Oh yeah. man. Ugh. That wow. is clean. <laughs> that reminds me of my buddy's uh my buddy yeah, Don's car. Don, absolutely. The he had a black dollar store Tupperware. Yeah. <laughs> I can't there was a seventy eight pacer dude. This is hilarious. The seventy eight pacer, I got that here too. He has done a ton of rallies, right? Lost his keys the morning of the start. I had no idea. Hey, Gary? He had to go and get a locksmith to come and make him new keys. That absolutely is Gary. Hotel, lost him in the hotel parking lot, uh, walking to his hotel room. Let, let's uh, check the, the, the handle here. Glebe 4 and... Yep, uh, yeah, that is. Glebe that 4, is. yeah, that is his car. So, uh, <laughs> Gary, this is Gary from California. Gary was the very first person to run a lemons rally or excuse me the babe rally hey, babe rally and a uh lemons event in the same car so he nice. had the dual tri two parts of the trifecta before we did with the wartburg nice yeah we know um, gary for years speaking of I lemons, his veterans, lemons yeah. event was after um grm his lemons event was yeah um but speaking of lemons veterans to make poor decisions, Chris Blizzard brought an 89, or I'm sorry, 99 F-350 with a camper shell. Brought his wife and his two kids along. Sounds like a great idea, right? After the second day, they had to cut and run because the kids were puking because they're riding in the camper shell on twisty roads in an F-350 and driving a camper shell on a curvy mountain road is terrifying. Probably. <laughs> so... 
yeah, it, 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 there's a lot going on. You'll, you'll, you'll get the entire thing on there. But poor Lisa had to witness all of this. I appreciate her sharing that little snippet of the story with us. Yeah, if, if you're not following your hometown. If you're not following the, the Instagram hashtag Lemons Rally, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you're missing out. Yeah. The next big one, and it looks like it's going to go, is the one you were threatening to do in Bangor, Maine, just before the Halloween Hoopty Fest. Threatening. Not going to happen. <laughs> Thank you, Rona. Uh, fair fair enough. Right, yeah, I, I, we, we wanted to do that one, too, but it uh, overlaps with the Hoopty Fest. Got a 88 Cressida sitting out in the driveway. That would be perfect for it. It's Isn't it supposed to end on the Friday night or is it supposed to Saturday end on night. the Sunday night? Oh. Saturday night. We'll, uh, yeah. well, you, Next you time got, we have Rude on, we're going to ask him about that because that's. You've got a qualified Cressida driver just to the left of my screen. And then, you know, Clayman will be there. I mean, mm-hmm. it's Saturday. How hard can it sure. be? Sure. We'll keep Matt's hands off his crotch. The car won't get wrecked. It'll be fine. Look, if you run four-hour shifts, you only get one a weekend. So just have yours on Saturday, on Sunday. That's true. Run two. <laughs> Let's get on to the real listener feedback. I know we've already been doing some, but we have YouTube li- watchers, listeners. I must call them listeners. We have – hi, YouTube. Everybody wave to YouTube. <laughs> That's how I watch. I watch on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Kagan09 said, this story was so good. I'm listening twice. That was last, uh, the, the last victory, week's episode. Yes. Yeah, about the about the victory. So that's Chris uh, Egan. Is that Chris Egan? I think so. <laughs> what the hell, Chris? You listen <laughs> to it on the podcast. Why are you watching on whatever? Shh, nine you is better. If, shush! If we get another 910 subscribers on YouTube, we can actually start editing a lot more. All right, everyone just go and subscribe. You don't have to actually watch. Just go and subscribe now. And, uh, and, and honestly, say like if, you know, I've got a spam account that like, oh, would you like to sign up for this to get something free? Sure. Here's an email that I'm never going to check. Uh, it's on Gmail. Um, maybe log on to that YouTube and subscribe. And then before you go to bed, hit play all on our videos. I'm just saying. You know, it, 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 helps. <laughs> it, it, it helps us. I don't know if you've noticed the steady uptick in our videos, but there's a lot of oddball accounts that are watching all of our videos. Oh, okay. Who knew? Oh, the one thing you have to mention, <laughs> Mental, when you talk about subscribing is ringing the notification bell. No, don't bother. You don't actually need to watch the videos. <laughs> the subscribe yep. button. <laughs> we don't, like, we don't do it I thought it, it was a thing. Yes. And by the way, YouTube listeners, Mental, I was able to link – the the videos i was able you to were. go like this and point. it was like this little tiny the little like little tiny up. thing that goes right there but you got it and actually that leads into the second apology i owe you oh. i forgot to do this should last i week. should i do the other listener feedback or should we do the apology first i'm gonna do the apology because you're gonna mispronounce who this guy is sure. um so about a year ago when they were coming back from new hampshire Jeff mentioned his tiny little gas tank on the Nissan Titan kept running out of gas and they had to stop and get gas. And he went on and on how somewhere in the hood of Hartford, Connecticut, he Hmm. found the best fried chicken he's ever had in his life. Now, well, let's not go that far. I said, I found really good fried chicken in the No, I'm pretty sure you said best you've ever eaten. It was good. you were pretty excited about it, Jeff. I was. It was really so, deep, good chicken. Being a <laughs> being a exists. being a proud Southern man, there is no way the best chicken Jeff has ever had is in Hartford, friggin' Connecticut. Okay, if I want a finger sandwich or a lobster troubadour or some sort of New England clam chowder, whatever you Yankees eat. That's when I go to Hartford, Connecticut, but not this fried chicken. Well, when we were at Thompson, again, Alex Levinson used to work at a bar in Hartford. And when they got done on Saturday nights, they would take, they would all pool their tips and send their bar back to this gas station in the hood of Hartford, Connecticut to buy whatever chicken was left because apparently this is the best fried chicken in the Northeast. (laughs) And we found out that it was the exact same place. Same that place. Jim and Jeff 
found by accident while looking for gas. And Alex has been in the bar industry for years. He knows food and I got to take his word for it. So Jeff, turns out you really did find some damn good fried chicken. In damn good Canada. fried chicken. <laughs> 944 other listener feedback 944 connoisseur jack Hanna. as podcast i listen to you guys while at work now that you're on youtube i have less to listen to at work because now i have to make time to watch the episode makes it much more fun just like we're part of the party jack aka the guy from the scrapyard refugees or got it right. scrappy art scrappy fujis Dave, even Dave knows that joke. <laughs> Look, when you put it in the show Scrap notes Scrap with a space between scrapyard <laughs> and refugees, I can read it. When it's the when it's the Instagram handle and it's all squished together, then I have a problem. So on Facebook, Jeff put a great slow motion video of the final moments of the Thompson race. And we got lots of really good positive feedback on that one. But a couple of comments that just stood out and made me laugh out loud. One of them, AJ Salza said, when the blocker forgets to block because he's staring at his teammates wheel falling off priceless and the other one again came from alex that moment when you want to be a wheaties commercial but realizing you're only good enough for special k sad trombone oh, wait. <laughs> i can get the trombone <laughs> <laughs> been practicing no no <laughs> no no just luck <laughs> what's a week you know only during the yeah. show yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Our non racer listener, Slider. Oh, wait. My iPad turned off. His Slider. number is in your phone. It's okay. Re- reach He's out on person. the Instagram. Uh, oh, is this, is this Slider who showed up on my phone? It's not a real name. <laughs> if, it, if it, Mental, you need to start dealing with people with real first names. That's all I'm going to say. Nah. Uh, congrats no, no. <laughs> on your win at Thompson. Just heard the whole exciting story on the podcast. So pumped. It's exciting. Uh, how's Iceman Slider? Uh, Corey Dickman also noted over two hours about the race on Thompson. Ugh, this should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then he texted me later and actually said it was a great story. So uh, sure. <laughs> sure. I, I have to say so, that during our uh, during our race, I was the first one to log in, and Corey was the only guy there, and we played "What Towns Don't Jeff Know in California." <laughs> Turns out all of them. All of but... them. I, my my <laughs> West Coast geography is terrible. All right. So uh, Chris and Chrissy, or I'm sorry, no, I'm jumping ahead. The uh, Racer Rona reaction. Uh, the Lemons folks, now they've had to reschedule some events and cancel some stuff, but they're not letting up on their audience engagement. There's some great stuff on their uh, YouTube channel. They just did one about the Chinook that belongs now to my buddy Justin. Uh, blocked to a former guest of ours. Um, um, why am I blanking on his name, Jeff? The Spank. Thank you, Spank. Oh. And uh, you know, he drove it to a race oh, yeah. and then sold it to my friend Justin, who's trying to uh, now bag it. He's gonna. He's an old manny trucking guy, so he's gonna for, do that. For those of you who don't know, a Chinook is a seventies, Toyota, eighties Toyota late, camper pickup. It's the same year as my Hilux. Wow, seventy-eight. Uh, but during these trying times, the old lemon folks, they may be running a little thin on subjects because Thursday they had the me, Chris and Chrissy on for the lemons Thursday therapy. I want to thank Erling particularly, uh, Erling checked in with us live while we were doing it. Uh, Corey, DC, Doug, Lisa, everyone else who engaged with us live during that time. That was a lot of fun. I wish we could have gotten more to that, but we were talking about stuff. Thanks to Nick and Eric for having us. It was a hoot. If you missed that, it, the link uh, to their Facebook broadcast is in our show notes. Yeah. They let us stay on also for Lemons Car Spotting, which, uh, of I, course, they, they threw up a BMW and we all, boring. Yeah, I, I had, a, like, a big work meeting that I couldn't miss. So I was, like, <laughs> zooming my work meeting, but my eyes were, like, over here watching, like, <laughs> like trying to read the closed caption because I had the sound turned down. And then, like, my coworker was, like, are you asleep? And I'm, like, 
no, I'm just not looking at the screen. So I, I got in trouble a little for my work. Anyway, uh, so Chris, Chrissy also joined Ryan and Eric for the Sunday night I Suck at Racing League. Uh, Dave, your video card was still out, so you didn't, you didn't participate in the Sunday no. race, did you? Does nope. That, anybody have a clue what happened? Who won? Who? No. Uh, no. Didn't Nathan? I caught the end of it. I think Nathan well, Slovene uh, won. Oh, Slovene, yeah. I he did, but they, they black they, flagged him because he was too far in front. They, oh, yes. yes. They black flagged him a lot. <laughs> yes. Chrissy and Chrissy were like, hey, hey, Ryan, black flag him. And then they black flagged him. <laughs> hey, black flag him again. He's too far in front. They also were doing uh, um, on, the, on the fly liveries for some of the cars that had, like, no livery on them. Nice. Uh, the Bearded Sim <laughs> Racer was able to do that. They did the uh, – uh, the Wrangler theme, they changed that car to a Jordash theme. Oh, that's, that's funny. excellent. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, you also Very said nice. you, you were uh, participating in our E1R races. Why don't you tell everybody about that? Uh, well, Chris set them up because uh, I was actually able to, to run part of it with the, the onboard video of my uh, computer with like 30 frames per second. <laughs> So we did uh, figure eight. Yeah, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but yeah, with one monitor. <laughs> it's a far cry. I, I always have one monitor. I don't know yes. what I'm talking about. But uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so we did uh, figure eight first, and that was an absolute blast. As always, Tom was hitting me, and I was hitting Tom. And those races are always flying. just a. You, it, it, the the best part is is I think there's it's becoming duplicatable. We've developed a skill set to where you can knock someone into the pits so fast they can get a speeding in pits penalty. Because yes. you always have the automatic <laughs> throttle set up that once you cross the green cones you can't speed. But if you hit somebody right, that's always hilarious. Yeah. Yes. Uh, somebody got a black flag. Their tires weren't even on the ground. They <laughs> flew through the pits in the air. And when they landed, they still had a black flag for speeding through the pits. I, I think Un it was unsafe, unsafe pit entry. Unsafe pit entry. <laughs> That's what it was. It was uh, yeah, oh, we had a black flag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we definitely had a blast. I was in the, uh, the, the uh, uh, Fozzie Bear liveried uh, legend. And I came in like third. I was like cruising. I was like, eat that, Shlamine! I'm ahead of you! It didn't last, but... Right. Yeah. Then we went to the dirt, and I was terrible. I don't even yeah. know what track that was. What was that? That was, that was Lanier. Ugh. Lanier right across dirt. the street from Road Atlanta. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not dirt anymore. They paved the entire thing. Like, the whole bowl is paved now because they do drift events there. But uh, back in the days when it was dirt, it was quite the spectacle. Yeah, yeah iRacing has both. They actually had the asphalt version of linear. Then when they came out uh, with dirt, they just made the same track with dirt on it. Nice. I was the only one who chose the chose the Pro 2 truck, which I yeah. don't understand that. But. I was in the 87 Monte Carlo, and it was uh, terrible. It was definitely not <laughs> the thing yeah. to bring. No. Yeah, you know definitely. how you, you know, they, they tell you to you know, turn right to go left? You were turning left to go right. I, 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 was, I was doing that. my best. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you ended up winning that by like 87 laps, didn't you? Seriously, only it was only 32. <laughs> well, I picked the one one of the other dirt cars was a dirt legend. Which, well, I yeah. should have picked yes. the legend. Yeah, the dirt it was legend only a 30 so lap race, so I don't know how he won by 32 laps. But he nah, did. whatever. <laughs> Levine did his backwards, and I think he won by 29 laps. He did. Yes. He was pretty close. <laughs> uh, is Chrissy's not here? Do do we still have to say hi to her mom? Yes. Yes. I'm just checking the rules. Hi, Chrissy. I'm sorry. Let, here, here, here. Let's 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 run through. Let's let's go through a decision diagram. Do you like cookies? Yes. 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 Would you yes. Would you like to continue to get delicious cookies at a race? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Who Wait, provides us? You. <laughs> <laughs> so, do, all right, and then now now a new sub thing. Do you want your ass beat by Aaron? And bear in mind, not only is he bigger than us he oh, also oh. beat cancer so you know, yeah yeah no we're, we're nothing compared to cancer so i don't want my yeah. butt kicked no so then yes do we do we say we still love you chrissy's mom even though chrissy isn't here absolutely we absolutely. love chrissy's mom and actually yes. it's not just the cookies she's a sweetheart so we love her to death totally 
Yeah. So, main topic time. I feel like I feel like is that, that, that's got a question mark at the end of it. Main topic time. We uh, uh we have assembled the crew on purpose tonight, not just because Chris and Chrissy were gone. Because actually, if they were going to be here, we'd still have y'all on because we need to talk about the Cressida. We need to talk about the Cressida because for a few reasons. A, it's probably better driven than our car. It is. B. <laughs> It proves that you don't need to have the highest horsepower car on the planet to win lemons. So basically, it's better proof of what we teach than our own car at this point because Pretty we much, have yeah. made our car a razor's edge to try and win. And the last it only took us three years. I, I was going to say, and the last race, these three jabokes plus some dude from down south who like eats kale for a living (laughs) (laughs) was a minute and 40 seconds behind us after 14 13 how many hours was the race 14 and a half 14 and a half hours of racing they were a minute and 40 behind us with a mechanical black flag that probably would have put you in the hunt for first place at, at least, least single digit seconds back. Oh, oh no <laughs> doubt. And and last year you guys finished fourth. You guys yep. were I want to say you were you were less than two minutes out of lead then. I was so, in the hospital for that one. Yeah, Aaron wasn't <laughs> yeah. there for that one. So so Dave, uh, we've had you on before to talk about RC. We've had you on mm-hmm. before to talk about iRacing. Jim, we've had you on to talk about computer stuff and iRacing. Aaron, this is your first time on, right? Something like that. Something like that. So why don't we begin with introductions? Say who you are. Somebody tell me about this damn Japanese four-door BMW looking thing. Wannabe. Uh, does it better than a Beamer? Yeah. I, I don't know. Conglomeration of rust and bolts. You're, you're talking, Aaron. Give us your resume. Who are you? How do you get to be with us? I am Wartburger Thief A.A. Ron. Um, Basically, how did I come to get with you guys? I uh, found you guys on the Lemons Forum with uh, Ray in the uh, Cortina back in 2014, I believe it was. So 2014 and, uh, was your first Lemons race, but you had a race, sort of race career before that, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Following Dave around for the most part, racing RC cars. Um, and then later on helping um, my other uncle, Dave's brother, at a... Wall Stadium, uh, Roundy Rounders, uh, Asphalt Modifieds, but mostly just, you know, always wanted to race myself, uh, found Lemons on, what show was that with Jesse Combs? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I know that show. Uh, the List, on the, the list. list. yep. And a buddy of mine had actually given me a fourth gen Camaro Z28, I think it was a 94. And I immediately, you know, tried to rope Dave into it. And he wasn't exactly biting out of the gate. He was like, yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> not. I find that and, hard to believe. Uh, 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 racing? Nah. No, yeah, well, uh, no, no. Dave's, uh, Dave's an internet savvy, so he probably Googled. He's like, what the hell are these idiots wearing? Oh, I, 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 I think it was the whole Chevy thing, if you're up. Oh, okay. (laughs) That too. Uh, I'm willing to go racing, just not in that piece of junk. I understand that. Right. So after getting on the forums and realizing that my best bet just to start out was probably finding an arrive and drive, posted something on the forums, and the first two people responded were Ray with the Cortina and what was that other team? Uh, Elmo's Revenge. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. With With the Rover. (laughs) <laughs> right. Well, at the time, it was actually they were running Saturn. a Saturn. That yeah, was before they wrecked Saturn, their Saturn. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, something about that 68 Ford Cortina just kind of caught my attention. You know, being an auto mechanic, I've, I've seen a million Saturns. I don't want to look at another Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> it's that whole Ford versus GM thing. Oh, you know, the Cortina hardly qualifies. It's a British car. So it's it's got double working against it, but um, yeah, that's pretty much where it started. Um, two races in the Cortina. Um, the Cortina 
broke. Um, car owner kind of drove me nuts. Uh, <laughs> finally, D- Dave, you know, to his credit, uh, showed up at the first lemons race and did just about as much work as I did keeping the Cortina running, if not more. Yeah. Um, just keeping it alive. Just keeping it alive. And, uh, had roped him in to race the next year and he found the Cressida. He's like, maybe we should get a backup car. And I'm telling him, don't, don't buy it. You don't need to buy that. This car will be fine. Why are we going to no, No, don't buy it. Don't buy it. So we go and look at it. He goes, well, listen, the price is right. Why not? All right, fine. And it wound up being about the only time he didn't listen to me and he was right. To not listen to me. Well, that, that is a great transition. Dave, why don't you tell us about how you got into lemons and then explain what the hell this Cressida is? Well, like Aaron said, I remember him talking about lemons and it, and it wasn't so much about like what these crazy idiots are doing or anything like that. It was kind of being apprehensive because I know myself once I get into it, forget it. It's going to be game over uh i'm gonna be feet Which first has happened already, anyway. clearly clearly <laughs> clearly absolutely so so then um he told me about when he got the the deal with the the cortina and ray and so i i went to the first race at new jersey and just wrenched all weekend and just to keep the thing it was overheating and it it, it just that just wasn't I, axle snap weekend right no no that no, was, that new, was new, hampshire. new hampshire yeah my wife yeah, my new wife hampshire. got the pictures of that one yeah, that, that race I didn't make it to. I was away on vacation somewhere else. But uh, so then, as my cat's driving me crazy, um, so that's when the following year, like Aaron said, we were supposed to um, run the Cortina Thompson. at Thompson, right? And it was probably maybe a month and a half before Thompson. I saw the Cortina for sale on, I think it was on Craigslist. It was only a few towns away from me. The Cressida, the Cressida. The Cressida, I'm sorry. And uh, um, so, you know, and Aaron, he had talked about it at that Camaro. And I said, you know what, for the time that it's going to take to build that Camaro, and it's still a Camaro, <laughs> we, we could buy this car. It's already got a cage and it's already been raced. You know, yeah, what could be so wrong with it? So, like he said, we went and looked at it, and and um, one of the things that sold me, Brian, the guy who originally built it, really knew Supras. Like he had had Supras beforehand, and his knowledge of the car was 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 great. Like he explained everything that he did to the car. Um, like I was comfortable in buying the car from him. He wasn't just some idiot that just took some junker and put a cage in it and went racing. Um, Unlike so we, the rest of us. Like yes. Literally sure. the rest of us. Yes. Did so, it still have the giant star exhaust? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll tell you a funny story about that. So <laughs> I had the, the star exhaust in my backyard for, I don't know, three or four years. And then last year, somebody posted pictures on Facebook, and Brian contacted me and asked me if he could buy the star back from me so he could hang it on his garage wall. <laughs> nice. So but, so yes. explain what it was. It was a Bozuzu. How do you say it? Bozuzuka-themed Bozuzu. car, yes. Bozuku. Bozuzuko. Both, yeah. whatever so so Japanese anyway he's low rider yes so the uh before thompson we were able to do a track day with it and ray had the cortina at we did it at uh raceway park in englishtown um i did it so a i could get some track time and run my new car and ray was i think he was working out bugs with the clutch and some other issues with it and if I remember correctly, the uh, ball joints, they were discovered to be really bad and unobtainium for a 68 Cortina with, I think, two weeks before the race. So we decided to buy tires for the Cressida and paint it real quick and run that. <laughs> I'm and pleading the fifth on all the Cortina talk. Yes. So that's that's where it started. And then the... The rest is history, as they say. So uh, I think I have a picture of the Cressida as purchased, J- just to show that, uh, yeah. And while Jeff's yep. taking, uh, yeah, while Jeff's taking up this picture, because this was a hilarious thing, and it was uh, something Phil had wanted for years. Uh, and it, it, there's it, a it, picture it, of the star exhaust. 
Yes. Um, I love the lesson that, you know, uh, Jeff ta- or rather uh, Dave talked about is when you show up to pick up the car and the guy starts talking intelligent mechanical stuff and you don't have to be a super mechanic, but when the, the person is telling you, oh, I did this, I did that. And they've been endurance racing, not speed racing. You know, that's one of those confidence level kind of buildups on that one. If, if you're shopping for a car, find someone that built it to last, not someone that built it to win. Uh, you, you'll, you'll make it win with your team. G- give us the basics. What is it? What, what, what is a Cressida? What year is it? What's been done to it? Uh, and then we'll get Jim to do his introductions and we'll start talking about the actual racing. So the Cressida, it's a 1986, uh, also known as an MX-73. Um, it was Toyota's um, luxury car. Um, basically, it's based off of the Mark II Supra. It's a little bit longer, but it has all the same suspension components. The rear trailing arms are a little bit longer, um, but otherwise all the drivetrain and everything else is, is identical. Um, as far as modifications, when we got it, it was really pretty stock. They didn't do anything to it other than it had, the previous owner uh, had done a, a, a manual swap in it. So it's got a manual transmission um, I mean, it still had the stock exhaust manifold. It still had a muffler in it. Um, they mostly just, they had actually only raced the car, I think twice. And um, we're mostly going after the theme. And I think they had like six drivers originally, so they weren't going out for wins. Um, but over the course of the years, um, we've I've done some upgrades to it, header, uh, air box, minor stuff suspension upgrades with you know better shocks uh i did do like a coil over conversion in the front but it was like a kit you had to weld on the strut tubes and um camber plates and pretty much that's about it for the most part a lot of the other stuff that's come along over the years was out of necessity you know motor swap after the old the original motor was just starting to get tired and actually started getting the leaky head gasket um how many and how many races did you go before you swapped the motor the first time? Well, there's a story behind that too. We did go. <laughs> I'm trying to think, we did. We we had picked up a, a um, I'll say slightly modified 6M that is the, an upgraded motor, but it had some work done to it, and we put it in for New Jersey in I think 2018. And it didn't make it through the end of practice day. Nah, put in a hot motor. That's the problem. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, well, basically, it was like uh, sucking Aaron's oil out of it. Aaron's having flashbacks. Yes. <laughs> so, so, that's, that's, that's third driver ignoring oil light going into corners. That's not a hot engine. That's idiot yes. behind the wheel. <laughs> yeah. well, the, 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 the engine, for some reason, we, it had a slow leak or it had like a small oil leak, but I, I think it was getting a lot of blow by and sucking oil out of it and, uh, and burning a lot. And then by the end of the practice day, it was so low under braking that the oil sloshed away from the oil pump. The little light flickered and, you know, two laps of that happening and it was done. So we spent all Friday night going and picking up the original motor, stayed up all night, putting it in. Um, I remember that cause I showed up to that lace Ray or rather race late and mm-hmm. you guys were wrenching on it. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Why, why, why are they? Wow. Re- What's with the Cressida? The Cressida. It's 11 o'clock at night. Why, why are they wrenching on the Cressida? <laughs> yep. So, that never happens. No. That car, when we try to make it faster, it loves to punish us. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. So, so we stayed up all night. Um, sun was coming up, and I had uh, the this, this theme from Days of Thunder, the intro playing, and in uh, Aaron's head <laughs> <laughs> when the sun's coming up over Daytona. Cause there was nobody in the garage. It was just us. The sun was I, coming I, up. I, I've been there. I know yes. what that's like. So, and then we, we got it fired up and it was pretty much Aaron got it. You know, I think he went and maybe took a 15 minute power nap. If that, and he strapped in for his stint, I got maybe a half an hour nap in while he was running. And, um, and was was that when Neil was Neil running with you on that race? No, Neil thankfully was there helping. Neil was, was there helping wrench, but I didn't remember yes. if he was there to. 
He yes. helped me get the engine out while Dave and Ray went and got the other engine. Yeah. Got it. Got um, it. We could not have done that weekend without Neil. That would not yeah. have happened without yeah. him. Yeah, so shout outs to Neil, who has only raced with us a couple times. Uh, he's a roundy round friend of yours, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we actually interviewed him and his son on the YouTubes. And watch this. I'll link it right there. Up there no, somewhere. It's, it's this. It's this big, folks. I, I know. Be, I know. But that's right where there. it is. But, it, so, but it's legit. It's legit. Yeah. It'll but be if there. You all, but if you all subscribe and just let the videos play overnight, we can we can do like the big link. I'm just saying. Yes. So that weekend we ended up uh, finishing fifth overall at New Jersey. <sighs> well, well, we'll get to the resume of how many times the Crescent has run. Let's get Jim an introduction here too. Jim is OG original four of the three pedal mafia uh back when mental was just an arrive and drive some dude we met on the internet uh you you were there to build the first car when we didn't even have the name three pedal mafia we were still running under misfit toys uh yeah tell yep. us of who you are and your racing resume and uh, you don't know nothing about cressida because this was your first race in the cressida or second race in the cressida the one that we Second. just finished. Second. Okay. So tell, us, tell us who you are. Introduce yourself. All right. So I am obviously your brother, the better of the two, because I show Fact. up on time. More, more hair. Uh, older, more hair. Wiser. More. Yes. yes. The whole works. Anyway. Um, so basically, my racing career goes back to the aforementioned Babe Rally, where we met Gary. Um, Mental was not on the Babe Rally the first time we went. No. That was a different gym, and Chris and I and a guy named Raph. F's in <laughs> chat for Raph's, by the way. Where is he these days? I don't know. Um, your your little dog up is my... showing up. Yeah, that's uh, Cody. Um, he, uh, so we did that in uh, what we affectionately called Fug... Fugly the Wonder Van. It was like 06, 07, somewhere 06, in that time. I think, actually, yeah. That was... saw, uh, G uh, Jim, didn't you have a picture of Fugly? Up yes. When we were waiting? Yeah. Go ahead, hit, click the share screen. Throw that up there. It's funny. Oh, man, I got to um, allow share. Go ahead, keep talking while I do the allow share. Uh, I'll just put it up behind my head. Oh. That? <laughs> Fugly the Wonder Van. Oops. Stop share. <laughs> <laughs> so this. Jeff lived in North Jersey back then, and we left from New York. Uh, so he came over, and he met us, and we drove to New Orleans in that, that wonderful van with the red shag carpet that went to the roof. I'm sure it smelled <laughs> wonderful at the end of a week. It smelled better at the end of I'm the week. I'm sure it smelled. Started. Yeah, that's where I was going to go. <laughs> that's a New Jersey custom van. There's no way it smelled good. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the wood grain was hand-painted. You could see brush marks in it. It was awesome. <laughs> anyway. Enough of the van. Anyway, so that that's when I met Chris. A uh, couple years later, we did the whole Workberg thing, and I met Mental when I picked him up from the airport. Had no idea what he looked like. All he said was he was going to be the one dude with a cowboy hat, and he was. He's in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're the only idiot in a cowboy hat. <laughs> uh, we raced the Wartburg that year. Uh, two years later, we were Three Pedal Mafia with yep. the Civic. <laughs> I want to throw the original uh, wagon van. Yeah, that I that I looped on lap zero. Uh, I, I I want to throw a little bit of a humble brag. If I'm not mistaken, at the time you picked me up, you were getting your bachelor's and your master's at the same time. Yes. <laughs> because just getting a bachelor's is so easy. Yeah, it's just hard. it's you know make a challenge when, out of it. When you're in your mid forties, it actually is yeah. easy. <laughs> okay, like uh, you know, you're used to working uh, forty hours a week for which like you were something years, which you were doing, and you were a father. Yeah, so yes, mm -hmm. and then so I took a four year vacation and got a bachelor's and master's degree <laughs> all at once as a full time student, thanks to the uh, home housing mortgage implosion crisis mm -hmm. that started in two thousand eight. Uh, I discovered very quickly that without a college degree. I wasn't even getting job interviews after so, being gainfully employed yeah. for 25 years. So now all of you people that have cable and cable internet and everything that works well with your cable and cable internet, 
Jim says you're welcome. If it's wrong, he didn't. He hasn't had a chance that's, to fix yeah, it. Yeah. That's not not my not not my department. <laughs> if these, it, days, if it, these days, these days, because if it was your department, it would work. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so we are down one race car. Uh, for those of you who have been listening for a while, you know that we uh, are slowly building a Z. Uh, that Aaron told us not to buy, but we didn't listen to Nobody all. ever listens to the mechanic. Yeah. Ever. Uh, I didn't. Aaron, I didn't listen to you. Aaron was yeah. right. It was a bad move. And we are half, we are 30%, 20% of way through an LS swap. Uh, so we had to punt Jim off the race, off the Civic team and punt him over to the Cressida team. And... Why don't you, I mean, we've already mentioned that you're a minute 40 behind us in third place of the closest race ever. Why don't you give us the story about how your race went this weekend or last weekend in Thompson? Can I, can I, can I be rude before we get yep, back? Cause do I want to throw a couple things. Cause Jim was there for the class B civic win. Yeah. Yep. Jim was there for the IOE with the Wartburg. All of them. All the work, was, all the IOEs, all, all the IOEs. All the IOEs. Just say Jim was there for the, you know, uh, Jim was there for the class B with the boat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, yeah, every time we have class come C away with <laughs> class C with the every boat, time we, with every the time boat. we've come away with a trophy, Jim's been in the driver's seat and uh, just I, Until this I think time. I said this. Yeah. I, I think I, I've said this um, one time, but to, to give you an idea of the character of Jim, Oh, uh, he's Character allergic to, discussion. Yes, he's allergic to dogs. What's laying on your bed right now, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> a chihuahua. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's got a chihuahua. Um, <laughs> of all the people that you know aren't direct blood relatives of mine, that my weenie dog likes the best, Jim is number one, and he had my weenie dog in his lap. I, that's how I found out you were allergic to dogs is you let my dumb weenie dog sit in your lap. The entire oh, parade, awesome. entire parade. Che- Cheech is pretty cool. But, well, Cheech also recognizes good people. So I just, again, I want to give you guys a, an inference as to the character of Jim. So he is, he is never a spotlight seeker, but he is always, he conveniently is always around when we have success. And I don't think that is a, He's around because we're succeeding. I think that equation goes backwards. So that's that's where I wanted to go with that one. Oh, thanks. I hate that. <laughs> wait, a second, um, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I oh oh hold on. I must share screen. Okay. This is not. Oh, is it the, is it the cheese picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, me, <laughs> me sitting in the boat at the parade with Cheech. And he spent hours there. Yeah. Yeah. He I was he so leave. miserable later. <laughs> that is that is a high quality dog. But I you sneeze whenever you even look at my dog, so I don't know how that happened. Your dogs like kill my allergies. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I just, they are rough. Um but they're they're also really good dogs. I mean, yeah, you know. all dogs are good. They're all good dogs. Um, and, 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 and we're going to talk about the the absolute domination of the Cressida across the board. We uh, we had the stats last week. I'm too lazy to dig them up, but I mean, basically, if you guys finish a race, you finish top ten. And one of the things that I I, I genuinely enjoy about this, with the exception of Jim, who's been in the SCCA since he was born. No, uh, I, th- I think that was your. The, your birth certificate is an SCCA membership card from your dad or something. I don't know, but you've, you've done a lot of jobs. You've, you've done corner workers. You've done a lot of HPDE. Now, uh, Dave, you've done some RC stuff and some circle track stuff. And the same thing with Aaron, you've done some circle track stuff, but you guys have never had formal racing training. You guys just learn the oh. hard way. So this is where I want to go with this is when we keep talking about, it's not the horsepower. It's the team that matters. It's the car. It's your pit stops. And, and I'm going to question you when you guys talk about Thompson about your pit stops because they were alarmingly A lot fast. faster than ours. Way fa- and we practiced ours and we yeah. still suck. So well, Ours we were got- quick. Yours are lightning. That's the problem. Yeah. I would argue that the Cressida is the least horsepower of any of the top 10 cars that you've ever finished the race in. 
I would, there might be one or two exceptions, but I don't think so. Um, well, at, at its weight. Yes. I'll agree with that. I mean, cause there's been, I think the mass holes one with uh, an escort that I, I don't know how much horsepower that that little escort has, but they okay. were really okay. so, good yeah. drivers. Yeah. Yeah. And right. cars right. a lot lighter. With us. So yeah. This, their cars there are car with me in it's like 3300 pounds so. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is the and with thing everyone that, else it's only like 3000 so <laughs> this is the so thing that like we that. keep talking <laughs> about is is you know you you can sit there and do all this read oh you know you, i need this part i need that part before i go to the track before i do this you don't oh i need to get this training i need to do this you don't what you need is a good group of people that you can trust, that you can talk to, that you can rely on, and mm -hmm. you need an anvil of a car. And there, there is definitely some smoke and mirrors here because I know that I lent Dave my truck once, and like six months later, I was still finding parts that he had like stashed <laughs> yes. in like every nook and cranny. I'm like, there's a purple bag here with like a brake <laughs> caliper in it. Is that yeah? That's ours. Okay. Yep. So oh so. As you're as you're listening to the story, just you know, we we don't joke when we say this is the most successful car in three pedal mafia history. This is documented fact. You know, there we'll catch there, up someday. Yeah, there's been races when we're sitting there staring at a broken boat, a broken Honda, uh, you know, a, a broken TR. Well, we're always staring at the broken TR. That's not the point. Yeah. And uh, we're like, well, Crescent, Crescent, Crescent is running. <laughs> I've so, been part of those conversations. Yeah, at least so, the president. Yeah, exactly, because you're. It's a, uh, t tell us about your race at Thompson. Will Mental and I will shut up for a minute, as hard as it is, and let you guys speak. All right, you want me to go who, first? Who wants first? Since uh, I can start it. with testing day. Sure. So testing day hadn't been driving much of anything lately, except for the uh, HPDE that we all went to down in in Pittsburgh, um, got to test the Cressida. It ran beautifully, right? Ran solid. I could put it anywhere on the track that I, I really felt like I needed to. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of traffic, so that was easier. Um, but I got to, to test it and do some really good stuff. And then later in the day, uh, when pretty much testing was about an hour and a half left, um, Chris said, Jim, take the Civic for a run. <laughs> and boy, was it different. Um, the, the Civic is... Uh, so you a remember, knife like, edge. Yeah, it was very twitchy, very squirrely. And there was a lot of things. It's like, oh, I cannot break this car. <laughs> I did not worry about that with the Cressida. Um, unless I did something really bad with it. But yeah, so the, the Civic was a lot... Um, louder a lot more aggressive uh so if you guys yeah. remember the difference louder is between, a good word <laughs> yeah the difference between like the noise the civic wagon van used to make and the boat yeah right? cut the top off <laughs> horrendous uh just just that beating of the air when you're driving the boat forget the fact that like the fiberglass is flapping and all that stuff um <laughs> that <laughs> difference is the difference between going from the Cressida to the Civic as it was when you guys raced it. I mean, it was that much. That was that much more raw. Well, they were both fun. And over a course of a stint, I prob I feel like I probably would have been faster overall in the Cressida. Interesting. Interesting. And I, I, keep, I keep hearing that, that like, you know, the Cressida is, you know, Sandra Bullock after half a bottle of wine and, you know, you're sliding in and then... Uh, wait, the wait, wait. Keep talking about that. Yeah, and, 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 and it's slower. <laughs> and the Civic is more like one of the crazy uh, uh, deadites from Army of Darkness. You know, ah, you'll never get the Necronomicon. So, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Dave, Aaron, tell us about what, what was the strategy. Uh, what was it like, you know, Dave, Dave we, we didn't think Aaron was going to run about three weeks out, right? I yeah, mean, we, we only just found out, what, maybe three weeks ago that Aaron was going to be able to run with us. So, And then his, his stamina was going to be in question. Uh, pretty much, like, I talked to all of the, you know, Jim, Aaron, and um, 
and Steve, and I had actually talked to Jim about like possibilities of how we split up four drivers because Thompson's um, format with it being what nine and a half hours on one day it, and yeah, six on like, the other, and then five on the other, five on the other, yeah. Uh, it makes it tough when like the Cresta can comfortably go two and a half hours on a stint comfortably. We can stretch With it a little a longer. Stock friggin' fuel tank. Yes. That's the other beauty uh, of the an Cressida. 18 gallon tank. Right. The Cressida has an 18 yeah, gallon we tank. Have a, we have a 22 gallon tank and we are choking at an hour and four. Wow. Five. We have problems. <laughs> yes. Didn't so, used to yeah. do that. Right. So, so we, everybody was like, let's go for the best finish. So we decided to go f- like four stints on Saturday and two stints on Sunday and then just decide on who would run Sunday. Uh, and everybody was cool with that. So we just go with that game plan and just the main objective is not step on your wiener. You know, you have the typically have the slowest car in the top 10 and um, six fast, fastest yeah, car of the at Thompson. weekend. Yep. What was it? Um, Eight? Was it thirty-six, 36 fastest? fastest? Yep. And uh, so we went with that. Everybody ran clean, ran good, consistent lap times. Didn't get in any trouble all day Saturday. And um, you know, all of our times were actually very close. Like I was really shocked at how close yes. we all four of us were. Like we were all within our fastest lap times were within like probably a second, second and a half of total. Um, if if you guys if you discount uh the yellow flags uh you had a handful of 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 blazers at 130s uh you had you had one 130 that was Aaron actually on lap 61 uh but then the rest of the times you guys are consistently 131 132s 134s and it it goes like that literally mm-hmm. uh yeah take the yellows out of that and so a 3 second spread maybe Yes. Yes. So, so your absolutely. best time at Thompson was one thirty point eight nine nine. Uh, we should mention that the best time in the Civic was a one twenty seven one fifty four. So when we say it's not the fastest, it's not that far off. It is not no. a slow car at all. No, no, it's not slow, but but it's it's but there's just. A, mm. I mean, if we, put, we were to put Chris in that car, I'm pretty sure Chris could probably get the crush of it down to a 129 or 128. Yeah, yeah. it's a oh, second. It has it in it. It, it's but, a second or two off. It's not a turd. And I've, I I've, stretch the imagination. I've, I think I'm one of. I think it's me and Chris here, the only people that have never driven the Cressida. No, I never drove it either. Okay, so there's there's three of us that have never driven the Cressida, and everyone says the same. Like Faridas says, you know, pantless Matt. Uh, it's claiming everyone says the same thing. They said the car is just right. You know, oh, I would like this car to be on the second piece of gravel coming out of turn three as I exit. Ah, it goes exactly where I would like it. Yeah, Pretty the car much. really talks to you. It, it's, 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 if you overdrive it, it's, it lets you know it right away. And it's it's very oh, control- the Civic does too by like spinning out. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. the the Cressida early on was like a little tail happy when we first got it. Some of the s- suspension, putting that spoiler on, it helped. Uh, the better shocks helped, um, but mostly it was just driver error, just overdriving it <laughs> in order to step out. It always it. is. Yeah, so it but, always is. But it, it's just yeah. it's it doesn't beat you up. You know, there's there's races where if if I had a 24 gallon fuel cell, I could just go all day. You know, yeah. <laughs> we'll be doing no driver stops. That is that's not gasoline leaking. It's urine. It's okay. It's so cool. so so you came in uh, the the end of day one. Everybody got a everybody got a chance, right? You put in all mm-hmm. four drivers, uh, which we only did three shifts. So we only stopped twice. You stopped three times. Mm-hmm. And uh, were you, where were you compared to the Civic? Uh, we were, what were we, second? You one, were second. One lap second. ahead. One lap ahead. In, yes. in uh, your first pit stop on Saturday was uh, at lap 80, uh, well, lap 81. And it, you guys were in fourth when you pulled in. Um, and you'd actually, on the lap, on your pull-in lap, you passed a car for position. Mm. From fifth to fourth. So, so you stopped more than us, yet we're still ahead of us. 
Oh yeah, at the end and, of the day, I'm sorry. That's where we I had an, yeah, we yeah. had an error free race. So yep. yeah, screw are you, you? I don't know what to say. What the <laughs> are hell? you paying? Are you paying attention, <laughs> listeners? This is this is what we keep talking about, and we're like Jeff said, they do what we say, not what we do. And I, I, I I'm not ever going to let this go, Aaron. You had not been in a car for I want to say 14 months. You had not strapped into a race just, car. Just just about yeah. My yeah. last race prior to this was Jersey last year. Yeah. So, so Saturday morning straps into a race car, never falls out of the top five, brings the car in and forth for his his first stint in 14 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot. A lot of that came down out of practice because I found out, like, I got in the car. I found out how just how being out of the car for a year, I had to build up the confidence in the car again. I desperately needed that track walk Friday night, mm-hmm. and I think that helped a lot. Once I had that down, then I was able to just get in the car and go because that just refreshed my memory on okay, I break here or lift here, and I remember what the car did and didn't like. Because up, at the, up until that point in practice, I was actually struggling a little bit. I just didn't have the confidence to be able to run it as deep as I could or really, really get get it out of the car. You know what I mean? Nice. I'm, I'm looking at data here. So keep talking. Tell us what well, else happened. Uh, so, so Saturday, uh, that was you guys' worst pit stop. And I finger quotes worst. Uh, it was a six-minute pit stop. And Steve gets, was it Steve that took the second stand on Saturday? Uh, it was me, Jim. Jim. So Jim gets in the car. You have now driven the Crescent how many times counting practice? Uh, twice. Twice. Twice counting practice. Jim gets maybe in three. the Maybe three times. Jim gets in the car. He's in ninth place. Because, again, it's still early in the race. There's a lot of things. And Jim gets as high as second brings the car in in second for the next pit stop, which I believe was Steve. Nope. Dave. Dave. Steve Never Dave. Mind. <laughs> Steve Dave. Steve Dave. All right. So um, while Jeff is looking up data, uh, Jim, tell us about your stint. Cause you went right. from ninth but, but, to second. Before we go, I just want to mention that I am not the fastest civic driver. I think I am probably a C plus civic driver. And my shift, I had a faster lap than you guys had in all race. So you smoked us by a lap plus with yeah. one last stop. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset now. I need to drive <laughs> or something. I don't know. I need to drive the Cressida. Next, <laughs> next race, I'm in. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Tell us about your shift. So I get in the the car. I think we had a little bit of trouble strapping me in. Um, so I drive up to the uh, to to get my belts checked as I head out and take off. And I have no idea what place I'm in or anything. I just know that the Crescent is working. And I spend two and a half hours and I don't see any one of the fast cars I expect to see. They just they don't come up from behind. I don't catch them. They're just like they weren't on the track. Uh, and what kind of telemetry do you guys have in there? You you Squat. watching your life? Squat. Zero. 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 <laughs> I don't. I so, don't even like people telling me just don't talk to me. Let me do my thing, mm-hmm. and that's it. So you're not monitoring lap times. Nope. You're nope. not talking about position. Nope. You're just out there running your race. Running a race. Yes. I had a conversation yeah. with one of the one of the garage heroes who was upset because the, 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 the iPad didn't get in for their shift and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, you don't need telemetry. Nope. You don't need to know what your lap times are. I ran my entire shift without lap times. I hated it because I wanted to better myself and better myself and better myself. But you guys don't even run it, and you're crushing it. We, we've yeah. talked about adding it several times. But it, it, we, we find it might just be more of a hindrance because there were certain people at the time that were running the car that had to have the fastest lap time of the weekend. And we just didn't want them knowing how fast they were running. <laughs> just get in All the right. car All right. yeah, gotcha. shut up and drive. Shut up and drive. Yeah. You know, it. so uh, no hero laps. There will be no hero laps in this car. You, that, that will be a flogging. So 
So it, just it, it, just uh, over halfway through your stint, Jim, uh, at lap yes. one sixteen, you left it. You left. You were in ninth place uh, when you you came out. You had some problems with the belt, so you guys were in ninth place by lap one sixteen. You guys were almost running eighty laps exactly uh, throughout the entire stint on Saturday. You were fourth, and, and by lap one twenty six, you were third. And while Chrissy was in the car, I was trying to diagnose why she was having radio trouble. <laughs> while we were having radio trouble yeah. yes and we were having radio trouble too so i was trying to figure out is it this car is it their car what's going on yeah. mm -hmm. jim is in so, charge of the radios in case you haven't figured it out yeah and the video and the video so um yeah that was that was a lot of fun i mean like i said uh passed a lot of cars um obviously uh there were a lot of cars that you know I came around again, like I saw them like clockwork, right? Every so many laps, they'd show up again. Um, but none what? of the fast cars. I didn't what? see Amanda's car. I didn't see the Civic. I didn't see the Solara. Didn't see much of the Silly Nanny's cars, except when the Mustang broke and parked up in by the second flag station. And turned that, was, that was Sunday. <laughs> that was Sunday? No, no, that was, that, no. no on Saturday. They broke on that Saturday, on too. Oh, oh, never mind. All right, yeah. 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 Like, they parked, like, you know how it's got like that hill and the flag stations like up at the top of the hill on the inside of the corner. They brought the car up there somehow. <laughs> yeah. I think they were having mechanical problems. I don't think that was like a crash or anything. So no. uh, would you say, because you've driven many of our cars, uh, I think everything, but the, but Betty at this point, right? Yes. Unless you count Homs's BMW. Oh, you didn't. You've never done Hobbs's BMW. I thought you did that at Pitt last you year. Did, anyway, no, you, you know, you you did run Hobbs's BMW at Thompson last year. I thought. No. No. I thought because we, right. we, we were doing a test was, to get you in it. Yeah, I just, like I don't. When I put my helmet on, I can't get into the car. He he made that uh, car for his wife, who's like this big. So, yeah. um, so anyway, so uh, is is do yeah, you I think the Cressida, TR, which yeah. is insane. Yeah. Uh, I've driven the boat, both our Civics, uh, the Wartburg. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the, the, the Ombre. The Ombre. Uh, so is it, is it a point and shoot? Is it a handling machine? Is it a power machine? Is it balanced? Is it, is it like, you know, is it a momentum car? Give us your thoughts. Uh, it's incredible if you can drive it like a momentum car because it doesn't have the torque. That a, that a high horsepower car would have, like the but TR or like the TR with the the supercharger in it. Like you you drive to the corner, you park because all the tires go all which way. You make your three point turn, and, and you zip and, down and the you, yeah. straight away, yeah. <laughs> and you can't see, and it's got manual steering, and every time you touch the throttle, the hood comes up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the yeah, TR, right, everybody. Bro. That's what's talking yeah. about the TR. The yes. TR is meth. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, like. The boat was just was just a riot because it was a, it was a truck with a boat wrapped around it. Place, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like, I missed the after boat a while. The psychology of the boat because people are like, oh, this thing's slow. I'm gonna dive bomb it. No, you're not. So, out of my way. <laughs> so so the Cressida is pretty powerful down the straights, but you're saying yes. that it that you drive it like a momentum car. Yes. Dave, Aaron, what's your uh, take on that? Aaron, go ahead. You've you've driven some other cars too. I'm the only one that um, hasn't driven anything but my own car. All right, so I've next only, time we trade. I've <laughs> yeah. only driven one other car, and that was uh, Bruce and Greg's Mustang in ADR. Okay. Yeah. And well, uh, that's, that's another one I have. And, and and the and the Cortina. Um, no, Jim's probably right. It's it, it likes being driven like a momentum car. It 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 works very well that way, but it does have a decent amount of pull down the straightaways. It, it absolutely does. does. Absolutely. And does. it sounds so good. Oh, that, I love the way that Inline six, sounds. man. It, nothing sounds as good six. as inline six. But, uh, it's so quiet that like, if you stall it while I have my ear, my headphones in and the helmet, I, I don't always notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause That's I did, that I did away with the earbuds and got the in helmet speakers. Cause I couldn't hear the car. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. It, it's very much a momentum car. Um, it, it would probably work wonders if we can cut like 200 pounds out of the car, including the driver. Um, but, well, you're, you're like 50 down. Let's not get excited, right? 
No, no, I'm pretty much right where I was before. Were you? All the answer nonsense, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm, I'm you, still a fat L, bastard. Now that, he's, now that he's done, now, yeah, but now that he's done with cancer, he can work on that. You know, true. It was, it was a point of pride. F you, cancer. I'm going right back to where I was before. <laughs> I'm trying. To, the the cancer is not <laughs> technically completely gone. It never will be. But uh, it's gone enough so I can go racing. So that's yeah, what matters. Yeah, you, you still win. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I put on the Facebook, your spleen got smaller, but your ass is still big. So. <laughs> I have no ass. I mean, I need a boomerang to put on my belt, but I have no ass. <laughs> I, I got two quotes so far. Just drive the car. Shut up and drive the car. Dot, dot, dot. Aaron. And I need a boomerang to put on a belt. <laughs> but I got no yeah. ass. You have to put the, but I got no but ass. I got no ass. That. It's, it's a backward crack. There is yeah. no ass. All right. All right, so Jim's nice. shift completes on Saturday. We're at like fourth mental. No, no, no. no. So this is literally Jim's last. Our sec. Uh, hold on. His he turned the car over in lap one sixty seven. On lap one sixty two, he passes for position, puts the car in second. This and this is an area that I feel like the Civic is lacking. Is your pit stops? You guys now your next pit stop full driver change how much gas did you throw in it before you got in it dave that's 16 gallons i think okay so almost all of the gas and that's 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 three jugs and three then a little suckers, right? yeah okay and then and, and a little on top of that your pit stop was four minutes and six seconds and you guys fiddle with a cool suit that's in your trunk don't you not every that the we run well we <laughs> now used to run a uh, a forty eight quart cooler so we didn't have to fiddle with it during the day ah. we'd load that thing up with big chunks of ice and now not we're have learning to fiddle. something now that yeah, that's are. the normal practice however that comes to play it was the it was it was hot holy crap it yes. was hot there this weekend so Men, you guys what lap that? was that I'm, I'm catching up my data here one sixty seven one sixty seven go ahead. All right, so you guys get the car back out the back out the gate in four minutes and six seconds. Came in in second. It's in third when uh, Dave takes over, and it stays in third for twenty two laps. Actually, a little. I'm sorry, I take that back. Less than twenty laps. So, uh, like eighteen laps at lap one eighty four, you put it back in the second, mm -hmm. and there it stays. Yep. Damn, damn, your entire shift. Oh, you went back to third at one moment and fourth for a moment, but oh no, wait, I think that's tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it's Sunday. tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is where Aaron's a jerk because Chris and Chrissy were telling Aaron Dave was chasing down the leaders, which was FRS's ugly uncle. Yeah, he was on yeah. their tail, and Chris or Chrissy are going, "Are you going to tell Dave that's the leader?" No, <laughs> shut up and drive. Shut up and drive. And Dave comes in and goes, I wish you would have told me. <laughs> well, that was the funny thing about with that. Aaron and I had the conversation. Um, they were involved in an incident that happened under the, under the bridge. And um, the driver at the time, I think his name was Chad, waved me up to him just, you know, for me to tell him how the back of his car looked because he got uh, tagged he got from behind. Tagged. And, um, and then I proceeded to pass him and then never saw him again. And that's why I was confused in the scoring. Like how, like, was I behind them and then passed them and not. So I'll have to actually go watch the video on it at some point and see. Stuff happens. Yeah. The time timing is not perfect. Oh, all the, at, at all yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. So your shift. What what happened? A anything go weird? Anything go? Gr you know, like th this sounds so drama free. Like, compared to last week, we're talking about like getting blocked and you know uh, belt problems and you know all this kind of business. Y'all no, just it, like, nah, we drove. Yeah, we just just <laughs> drove. I mean, there's um, we all have our our, our less. Uh, favorable cars to pass uh there's some people that are just uh so, some of the races tough to get around some are tough to get around and um 
others are just great to race with. You know, there's people that, that recognize our car and, and, you know, you, you trust them completely, but we just really just try to not step on our wiener, you know, don't stick your nose where it shouldn't be, you know, and just get through your shift with no black flags. That's the main objective. Get through your shift with no black flags. Dot, dot, dot. Consist, consistent lap Uncle times. Dave, mm-hmm. yep. That's, and that's brilliant. So on lap 256, you hand it over to Steve. Mm-hmm. This is where I get really upset. So your pit stop was two minutes and 59 seconds. How much gas did you put in that car? That 16 gallons. Crazy. 16 <laughs> gallons, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you're noticing a trend here. The drivers are getting smaller and smaller throughout. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that that's actually See, part of it. This 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 is a strategy that somebody once told us that probably means exactly squat, but it's working. We start with the, the biggest yeah. driver first. At that way, the next person in the car, all you have to do is tighten the belts. Tighten the belts. Next person in the car, all you have to do is tighten the belts. Mm-hmm. And, and when you Steve, guys are this consistent, and when you guys are this consistent and this close, that's that's the delineator. You don't need a strong finisher. You don't need a strong starter because everyone's as good as anyone else. Yeah. And Steve so, gets in the car, boy, do we have to tighten those belts. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. And Steve Fair. puts a pad in the car. Steve has a little yeah. booster pad to move him forward. <laughs> like an Because our, our seat isn't on rails. Otherwise, right. I don't fit in it. So, mm-hmm. Fair. So you guys pull in the pits in second place. Steve gets in the car. You pull back out in second place. Second. How oh. is that possible? Two minutes, 59 seconds, 16 gallons. That's how it's possible. They, this is everything Homs is trying to beat into us is move slow, move with purpose. Yeah. It helps that it's not in, the, in a hatch. Yes. I don't know how you guys <laughs> yeah. do that. I yeah, watch yes. you guys. It's not easy. Uh, I do five-minute pit stops. That's exactly. how we do it. <laughs> exactly. Herpes would be less painful. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you, we should mention the Crescent is running a stock tank. It, it yes. you, <clears throat> Nobody's listening from Lemons. If you are, turn off for a minute. <laughs> Any modifications to the fuel neck? No, oh, uh, hogging out. So Yeah, know. just the, uh, the, the legal one that you're allowed to take one. out, that unleaded one, yeah. Yeah. That's that it. is specifically spelled out in the rules. Yep. Aaron, I, Aaron, I think you froze on us. I don't know if you want to turn off your video and turn it back on. Um, um I, I've, I haven't been able to see you guys the whole time. So, oh, okay, fair That's enough. Terrible. All right. Well, if, if it's if it's all good, the pose, you look like your normal self. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fat and glorious. <laughs> yeah. So and, now, Steve maintains. Oh, now we got cons- you. Okay, Steve maintains consistent times. Uh, there's a couple of yellow flags there, but nothing big. He finds his way all the way up to all the way up to fourth place, but then gets the car back down to second by lap 319. And there it stays until the end of the day. And how many cars finish on the lead lap? I don't Uh, remember. Three. Yep. Two? Yeah, no. two, because oh, no, we were third. We were third, and we were one back. I was thinking we were fourth, yeah. <laughs> so basically, you and the nannies are the only cars on the lead lap. Uh, FRS, I thought, was in first, weren't they? Nope. nope. Mm, no, they, had, they, had, they stepped on their wangs earlier oh, in the right. day. I, yeah. I think uh, the nannies, by the end of the day, were back in the lead. You're right, they were. I just looked at yeah. my data here. Yeah. All right. So, so, here, you, so you were so here exactly we a minute and five seconds behind the nannies. Yep. Uh, and because, about right. and because and of the way the turbo, restart is. Yeah. They're in a turbocharged Audi S4. Yeah. Which I want to say is 240 horsepower. I was going to say 260, I thought. Yeah, it's up there. It's, it, it's it, at fire all weekend. It it pitch slaps us down the straightaway, but we can we can kind of catch it in the corners. And and, and they drive yeah. hard. 
I, I know that we have said great things and funny things and, and mess with the nannies a lot. They drove the wheels right off it. They dr- absolutely, <laughs> they drove the wheels right off it. But they, they are not bad drivers. They sometimes no. can be a little bit too aggressive, but whatever. That's what you got to do to win. People mention that. Oh, oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. uh, yeah. So, yeah, a minute 40 behind the, uh, the eventual wheel losing Audi. Uh, damn. In a hundred and what horsepower? I don't know, probably 170, 165, 100, 70, 170 when it was 170 when it was new. Yeah. Never <laughs> been to a dyno? Nope. No. <laughs> Afraid of breaking. Ain't nobody got ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> for the money. A, a stock tank, <laughs> yep. 170 horsepower, oh. 3,100 pounds dry. No, I think about I think uh when I had it on a scale it's about twenty seven, twenty eight hundred. So yeah, with me it's just over three hundred or three grand. Three thousand. Like okay. I think you said thirty three with Yeah, I think, right, so. I, think he, I think he was joking. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. So yeah, so not not the lightest ballerina. No. It's got I'd, some wheelbase on it, it's got some length. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, as much as Aaron says that he's a big person, Dave and I are not small either. No, Steve is a twig. Steve yeah. is Steve. Yeah. Is Steve. Other than Steve, nobody's getting in that thing that uh, is is not going to shop at the uh, 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 adult section. I couldn't <laughs> fit Steve's fire suit over my leg. <laughs> it is interesting. Is is Steve? Steve is he's not a small person, and he's no. heavier than he looks because he works out he's like a speed. muscly. Yeah. No, he he's is, all muscle. Yeah, he is all mu- him and Bruce are just. Freaking wads of muscle. They're little fire plugs. We call it wiry. No, if, no, if I'm wiry. YouTube video, Steve is fucking stout. <laughs> if you watch the YouTube video, you might actually hear me yelling at him to eat a freaking cheeseburger. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, Saturday, you're in second. You're a minute out. Dave, uh, your team captain, you make the decision. Put two people in the car and who's going to get in. How'd you make the decision? Well, honestly, I looked at everybody's lap times, like, through the day. And, like I said earlier, we were all so close. I don't think it really mattered. Um, Aaron had the fastest lap time. Aaron hasn't been in in 14 months. I definitely want him in. And, and honestly, Jim ran with us at New Hampshire last year when Aaron couldn't run. And that was the only race we ever had a DNF due to mechanical failures. And we burned up two diffs. And Jim got screwed. So um and honestly i've been very blessed with this car that of all the races we've run with it i've gotten my stint like my um you know my time my seat time in every race there's only one race that i we left aaron in at thompson when we had that downpour because we could make it on fuel and i said just leave him in the car so it's why i wanted to give jim the 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 seat time because he got hosed in new hampshire and and I wasn't worried about the lap times because we were all very close. It didn't really make a difference in my opinion. Great team decision, obviously. Uh, you know, it, it's not easy for the car owner to say, you know what, oh, no, I'm going to sit this easy. one out. It wasn't easy. Because <laughs> everybody, and, and this is just it, you know, like people want to be in the seat Mm-hmm. when the win happens mm-hmm. like racers want to yeah. race no i, I yeah. it doesn't matter what sport it is the 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 captain wants to be the quarterback when they're going down nobody wants to be on the bench when the defense wins the game right yeah so good 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 team captaining uh yeah tell us about sunday uh, it's probably gonna be a boring story we, we drove the car yeah, pretty much oh, oh. Uh, oh. uh, a sun- Sunday he started off actually mental told the story of me talking to him. Cause, uh, Dave had to have a sit down with me. <laughs> was, oh yeah. Uh, this yeah. is news to me. Yeah. I, I, I was a little unhappy with some of the blocking that was going on with the civic. And, uh, you, you that, that had to sit me down. You better keep your ass out of that. Yep. Yeah. Fine. I said, don't Fine. So, just, just run your race. Let them be. Let them go. And, so that's why I, I, ta- I sat the mental like, listen, I'll let you go when you're ready to go. I'll get out of your way because I'm, I'm just going to run my race. And that's pretty much all I did. I uh, just took the green and went for it. I, I think I led 
probably 20 laps. Um, the nannies uh, stepped on their wangs again. Yeah. Oh, um, but before, before that happened, so Aaron goes to run his own race. The green, green flag drops. Anybody want to guess how many laps before Aaron got around him? Oh, he was around him in the first lap. Bingo. Dude. Exactly. He, he was around like, him in a hundred yards. I watched it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff and I were standing watching it. And the green flag, the green flew, flag and I don't, goes. I don't know what every, happened to the nannies. They were just not ready. I don't know if they missed yeah. that the green flag went, but everybody went around. I don't know if they were in the wrong gear. I don't know what happened, but they went immediately from leading the pack in first to like eighth or ninth. But, but but don't and don't qualify. Also, you know, those opening laps, Aaron threw down a uh, couple of really sharp, like low one thirties. Of course, because he's a crescent, and that's track. what the crescent does. <laughs> I had but a no, lot but of honestly, clean track. Yeah, this is this is truth. There is tremendous benefit to being on the pole at a lemons race because mm-hmm. traffic management is probably the most important skill, mm-hmm. and the fastest the civic has ever gone around the track was after a very long yellow when chris was following with the uh the the straight out of suncock guys and there was nobody in front of them at thompson Mm -hmm. and same thing with aaron he just said it he was at the front the guy in front of him missed a shift or something shift missed and you had a ton of open track and you took advantage of it yeah yeah aaron Aaron basically beat him to the start finish line. Uh, so did about six other cars behind him. Right. Well, it's but true. Aaron was leading because he was the only other car on the lead lap. Yeah. So even if he got passed, he was still leading the race. Right. Yeah. And oh, the, the silly nanny's car was still in second, even though like eight cars went by. Yeah, absolutely. I spent the and first they, five yeah. laps looking up in the mirror waiting for mental. I wondered where mental went. I was like, where did everybody go? <laughs> <laughs> Mental, mental, how long did it mental. take you to get around them? Uh, it was Cause, a while. Because you had never, you had not turned any laps at Thompson in a long time. A year. A year, yeah. In fact, the last time I was in the Civic was Thompson. So it had been almost exactly 12 months. I know you were given team orders to, you know, gradually come up to speed. Yes, exactly. Don't break the car. Don't step on your wiener. There's yeah. a there's a car here on our podcast that, you know, manages to always consistently finish by adhering to those two rules. So that was, uh, that was our thing. Yeah. Um, but I, you did get around him eventually. Eventually. But this is what I want to come back to is he mentions that the, uh, the nanny stepped on their wiener and a mere 40 laps later, Aaron is in what place? First, first, which yeah. I had no idea about somebody. I think I heard somebody say it over the radio, but I could barely make it out. <laughs> I don't think I got around you. You started in lap 340-something. I don't think I unwound that lap and got around you until lap 409. Or that might have been the nannies, but I think I think it was me. Because I, uh, ar- I got around the nannies twice. And I remember my little smart-ass comment of, hey, you guys remember that time I passed the nannies twice and one? Stand yeah, <laughs> you were doing like I did when I saw uh, Momrath in the in in the pits. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. but yeah, but, you know, I got around the track. Um, but again, so Aaron puts that car in first and second, and there it stays until he gives the car to Jim. Anyone want to guess how long your pit stop took you this friggin' time with sixteen gallons of gas? No idea. Three minutes, 26 seconds. <laughs> That's unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is a closely knit, well-communicated, and if you watch a Crescent of Pit Stop, it, it moves efficiently, but it doesn't have this sense of speed, and it doesn't have a sense of chaos. It has a yeah, sense it's, of it's, organization and precision. It's take your time because if you screw up in pit lane, the penalty is a lot worse. Yes. So, yeah, exactly. you know, take your time. That's, act, that's how we won Class B a couple of years ago was against Bazinga. We had a quick pit another, stop. Another Bazingas are not slouches at all. No. Bazinga's quick. 
they were catching us. They were faster than us. They had just gotten onto the same lap as, as us. Ray was driving. They came into the pits. We came in a lap later. We left before them. They were still fueling because they were using old jugs. Was that wow. in their 280? Yes. Yeah. Nice. And that's and and they still managed to screw up on pit lane because they got stopped at the end of, at the pit lane. And Dale gave them gave them hell for something. So if it's, Dale's it's, if Dale's mad at you, you've made a mistake. Right. You you yes. definitely stepped on your wine. <laughs> we we should mention that uh, Bazinga ended up fifth in this race. Yeah. Uh, and was the first car out of the lead lap uh, in their new R32Z. Yeah. So that's and, that's what a running yeah. Z looks like, Jeff. Yeah, I know. Ah! Uh, <laughs> very oh, funny, very nice. mother. <laughs> so, uh, Aaron, you brought the car in on lap 433. Yeah, the, the three minute, 26 second pit stop. Jim, you're in the car. You want to guess how long it took you to put it in first place? I don't know, probably until the the leader pit came in. It was like two laps, wasn't it? Two laps. Yeah. He went out like when we pit. Yeah, he went on a lap on four thirty four. That was his first at speed. Well, he went out on four thirty three. Four thirty four was his first lap, and then in four thirty five he's in first. Yeah. That was because we pit. Yeah, because all the fast teams were pitting about that time. He was so also consistently turning a 132s and 135s. Well, I'm not saying he didn't pass us. I'm just saying. <laughs> so. so, yes, quite well done. And then, uh, then we start we start running into yellow flags and that sort of thing. Uh, Jim, you keep the car in fourth and third until, and we've already talked about the drama to the last minute. But you stayed on the lead lap the entire time. Um, and all of the videos that we show of us, because we're a very egocentric group of people, in every video of us, there's always a Cressida. The Cressida is like, it's there. It's right there. Um, yeah. I Reason. talked about this, and Chris talked about this on Sunday. We both agree that was probably the drive of our careers. How do you feel? And actually, Aaron and Jim, how do you guys feel about your drive on Sunday? Uh, just a Tuesday. Oh, was it any good? Yeah, like driving pretty, to work. Yeah. It really was. I don't know. Um, shut up and drive. I didn't do anything. Yeah, shut up and drive. <laughs> That's it. it. It really. It was very non. It, I just went out to have fun. To be honest. Um. Yeah, I wanted to stay up front, but I had a lot of racing to do to make up for a year. So. That was it. Just go out and run a clean race. It was. It's just than any other race for me. What, one of my yeah, favorite, honestly. one of my favorite lines ever from South Park is when Cartman. It's like at the end of an episode, and it's a you know a tearjerker episode, and he goes, "I love you guys," <laughs> and then there's like a moment of crickets, and he goes, "Ah, screw you guys." <laughs> I'm going back and forth between I love you guys, I screw you guys every two minutes in this damn story. I worked my ass off in that Civic. <laughs> it has more horsepower, is lighter, Al handles everything on the track. And, uh, yeah, we just ran our race. Yeah. Uh. I, 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 it, it really, the only part that got hard was halfway through my ship, the cool shirt stopped working. Oh, oh. my cool shirt don't work. <laughs> Fuck. Right. Screw right. you guys! <laughs> And, and that's where our mechanical black flag came from. Because I, I'm, absolutely, I, I, yes. I should mention my part of the mechanical black flag. It's totally your fault, Jeff. It's yep. totally <laughs> <my> fault. <laughs> I, Jinx this. Absolutely. Side 2020, I I helped him with it, so I can't really be mad at him for it. I no. followed orders. <laughs> no, you he, did, you did the right said, thing, Jeff. Dave Listen. said. Will you help? Will you drop in the water in the cooler? And I said, sure. I've never done it before. Tell me how it works. You know, blah, 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 blah. He gave me the instructions. And you said, I think we're running out of water. So yeah, pour it, it all in. Yep. So I poured yeah. it all in. And, and I was thinking about Jim getting in the car for a whole stint without a cool shirt. Yeah, the cool shirt. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I, appreciate, I appreciated the water. And it was working when I got out. So it, it so, was the and, right thing to do, I think. 
We, we should uh, mention that the reason that you fell to fourth was not because you got slow. Mm -mm. But tell us about the black flag. So Lab 445. So I'm coming around. Um, I go past start finish. There's a black flag waving, and I look up because, you know, it's not my number, but I always check, and it's a 71. I go diving through turn one. I get on the radio. Guys, I think I stepped on, our, on my wiener. I stepped on our wiener here. I don't know what I did. Don't know what's going on. Got a black, fl black flag. Go around. You go through the, the bowl. Guys got black flag pointed at the car. Number board says 71. Like they're, yep, that's it. And everyone's going. Does Jim? <laughs> does Jim even know where the penalty box is? And, and he, we we he, should mention the Crescent is bright orange. It's got <laughs> yeah. giant seventy ones on it in white. It is extremely. I, actually, I think that's you, Jim, on the on the picture I'm sharing right there. Uh, yeah. uh, you're, yes. you're the only black helmet, I think, right? No, mine's helmet. No. My helmet's black too. Oh. But I see the glasses. I think they're wearing glasses. That must be Jim. Uh, yeah. But anyway. I wear glasses too. <laughs> <laughs> when you race? I thought you wore contacts when you race. Right. No. Nope. No, I think that's got the, um, my helmet is the, uh, what is it? HJC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm over, I happen to be over by the judges. So I'm on the radio. I'm like, do not come in. Do not come in. I will check. I will check. So I go over and I'm like, I think Dave, you were like right behind yeah, me. Yeah, I was right, right there. Yep. And I was like, did you just black flag 71? Like what happened? You know, it's Do the leader you know of the race, who we right? Are? <laughs> I think they're leading. I, I think at that point we weren't sure wh I, where we were exactly. Yeah, no, at this yeah, point was, it was too late. I was already pulling into the pit. Well, Dave, <laughs> to, to give your conversation with Rude and company. Yeah, so I, I talked to Eric and I, and I told him, I said, I'm sure it's just the, the cool box. Because prior to our pit stop, I spoke to Eric just to verify what we can and can't do on our pit stops with the cool box because we don't normally ever have to add ice or anything to our cool shirt box because it's 87 gallons because cool it right box, it's right? like we're carrying around a 55 <laughs> gallon drum in the trunk because that doesn't um, add weight into the no. ass end of your car but we it get does three minutes it does it does it does, it does, it does, it does dress does. yeah so right. so anyway that's when eric was like have him stay out another lap and what I, I called Jim right away, but he was already on pit road. And I was at the end of pit yeah, road. He was already at the end of pit road. So it was, it was too late for that. So he, they, they were nice enough to let us come down and towards the, uh, towards the penalty box, Manny and, and Eric went out to the car and touched the water on the ground, smelled it, said it's water. And he turned us right around and sent us back out. Still cost you more laps than an average pit stop. Because in the pit oh, stops, yeah. you're coming in and like you're yeah. going out so quickly that you're barely losing a lap. Anyway, go ahead, Matthew. So, so we got an email from Eric Root, the corner worker that had called it in, and also Amanda's driver was calling it in. Uh, and it was just a, hey, man, don't let, don't let the cheaty guys burn up, you know, because he was, you know, trying to keep it on the DL because everybody likes you guys. And uh, the corner worker afterwards comes over and Eric said he used this word, devastated was absolutely apologetic and devastated because, oh, my God, they were running up front. Oh, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. And Jim sends back a really nice email of, hey, man, I've been a corner worker. I know how it is. And you know what's worse than, you know, losing first place? Burning alive. <laughs> Burning so. up and dying is definitely worse <laughs> than finishing second. So, absolutely. Yeah, you know, so – no bitterness, none of this kind of stuff. Just a world class. All three of you guys were just, you know, eh, that kind of sucks. Oh well, let's just oh, go out and keep. Running. I was a cranky bitch about it. But... <laughs> I'm glad to hear somebody's got some emotion. This damn team. I was a cranky bitch about it. I got out of the car sweating my ass off, and now we're losing. Well, what is this crap? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I I was really upset. I mean, I felt at like the it time, cost at us the time. a shot at the, at the win. Yeah, little did you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, and honestly, the one thing that bothers me about it right now is I'm not, you know, I would have loved to have been at the tail end behind the Solara that was behind Chris. And we, I could have seen, the, yeah. seen that happen. 
at the end. That would have been awesome. But chances are, if I'd been in that pack, the wheel would have bounced up, hit the crest. (laughs) Probably, probably. (laughs) So so I'm not going to play one of them. It would have kept going. It probably would have like taken the wheel and put it back on their car for them as you, it passed. You, know, you were only a turn or so behind. Did you see the nanny's car with the wheel off? Yes, but they were. <laughs> um, so the wheel comes off at like on the straight in the coming out of the um, bowl. In, in, in the, the bowl. Yeah, yeah. Part, in the, and they the successfully the negotiate that left turn on three wheels. <laughs> right. Well, it's because so it was that side. <laughs> <laughs> So I come around. I was probably a turn or two in front of them. When you crossed right? the line. <laughs> when uh, when the wheel fell off. Oh, in front? So I was, right, because I was what? In, oh, because uh, you were like a, a lap behind. 20 seconds back, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're turning minute and 30 second laps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm probably like going up over the hill when the wheel falls, the hill for the straight when the wheel yeah, falls yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So all I hear is Chris screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's he's ecstatic. I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> no, I'm like, the Audi fucking crashed. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, like the Audi oh. did something stupid and crashed. Um, you know tried to do something, tried to block something and hit like a slow car or something. That's what I'm thinking. Chris is ecstatic. I'm like, yeah, awesome. You know, and I just But now you got to finish your lap. Yeah. Now I got to finish my lap, right? Well, I also, I also don't know it's the end of the race yet. No, n- none of us knew. True, right? true, true. Like, I don't know the checker is out. So I go a couple more turns. Chris is screaming his head off. I can't understand anything on the radio. A couple more turns. I come up over, you know, finish my lap, and I'm coming around to start finish. I come up over the hill, and there's, you know, I I start seeing, like, the white flags. Like, all right, you know, safety truck. I come up over the hill. There's two safety trucks. The Z is pushing the Audi, and I go blowing by. And I'm like... Oh, oh! Now I see. Uh, I was like, "Oh, that get, does that get me to back to the lead lap?" <laughs> but I, like I said, I have no idea where Chris is. I don't know who's on the lead lap or anything. You, you didn't know the checker was out at that point. Well, then, then I saw the checker. Then obviously. you saw the checker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, you could have hit that Audi wheel, and the car would have been fine. Matt hit a pile of tires with the with the Cressida. <laughs> That's and true. it's still fine. Yeah. And it still runs. <laughs> and see, and I feel like that's the number four, number five rule of the Cressida. You know, number one, don't step on your wiener. Uh, you know, number two is momentum car, blah, blah, blah. But rule number four is don't touch your wiener while right. driving. While driving, yes, absolutely. Right. No sticky yeah. shifters, please. <laughs> so, so the lap previous to the last lap, you ran a 135. Let me see here. I'm trying to okay. see what uh, – Chris's second to last lap, which we already know was Superman, was 130. So, yeah, you were probably eight to ten seconds ahead of him. Ahead, ahead on, of the, that on the track. Ahead of the track. So, you know, if, if something would have gone wrong, if the wheel would have hit the Civic, if the yes. Civic would have hit the uncle, FRS's ugly uncle, you weren't bridesmaids. You were brides, because yeah, you were like, the only other car on the on the lead lap. Basinga yeah, Racing, one behind you, was uh, an entire lap back. Yeah, sounds so, about right. So, but none, nonetheless, you were one of the hastily written in podiums. Oh shit, we gotta go redo <laughs> all this. <laughs> so, like, without the without the mechanical black flag. And I love the fact that they got us in and out really quick. I love the fact that, like, they kept me from dying in a fire. <laughs> you know, but, but it I looks would... like it was a, a three-minute-plus lap instead of a minute-30-plus lap. Right. So it right. absolutely uh, cost you what you lost the race by. And I would have loved to have been at the tail end of that pack in there at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I know you're a recent finishing, listener because you, you only – third is fine. Yeah, because you only listen when we started watching on YouTube. Even though I'm your brother, 
that's okay. I'm not mad. My brother doesn't listen. It's I, my brother <laughs> takes the train to work. <laughs> no, I'm I just don't. saying. You used Corona, to, man. I, I walk to. from here to the other room. I know, I know. You <gasps> used to take the train. There is no better time to listen to a podcast than when you're on a train. But anyway, we have right. one rule. Mental, what is our rule? Perfect. Oh, yes. Perfect just buys you the lottery ticket. Perfect just buys you the lottery ticket. It's really a philosophy rather it's than a It's a philosophy. Rule. You're right. It's yeah. a philosophy. Perfect race in a car that is fast enough is only a lottery ticket to the win. Mm-hmm. We have bought yes. that lottery ticket for two for a year and a half at least i would argue that i would argue that crescent has bought that lottery ticket more than we have just by being absolutely I, absolutely we scratched it off and we happened to win last week mm. you scratch it off and got a leaky fuels uh leaky leaky cooler cooler yep pretty yeah, much yeah. yeah i mean realistically like the best finish we could have had was one two and we got one three yeah. I mean, think Truth. about it that way. Truth. Without yeah. a doubt. And then, um, the, then the nannies would have been blocking y'all. That's um, what I think would have happened. I would have gone um, out they did. and hit them. They did. That's true. I'm so sure like, I came around somebody, uh, you, you know the Godzilla's not the problem anymore, right? What? No. No. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> no one told me this. <laughs> so, that's like, the, I came up on accent. the Z. I came up on the Z one time. He was definitely cruising Sunday driving with the slow cars. And I blew past them, and there's like three <laughs> orange cars on the track, right? Maybe four, right? There's four orange cars in the entire race. I blow past them. I think he goes, oh, that was that orange car. Because he takes <laughs> off like a bat out of hell to catch me and follows me for like a lap and a half. Trying to, try to the, get in front of you. Yeah. Because yeah. they were going to block you? Probably because yeah. we were we we've we already been in the lead at that point. Yeah, we've already mentioned that they were slowing down and waiting for the leader to catch them, and then hanging on their bumper, preferably their front bumper, and going hella slow. So, but anyway, we, we're not here to talk about the nannies. We did that last week. I'm over it. <laughs> I I um since since I was like way far away and didn't see the the final battle. I really enjoyed watching the videos. As the videos are fantastic. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, oh, by that's the way, all I'm going to say about them. Sh- shout out your YouTube channel so that everyone can see the entire section. Yeah. It's uh Jay Wakeman. Just J W A K E M E N E N on everybody. E N. Yes. E N. Man. On- we are yeah, plural. 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 And, 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 and while you're there, why not subscribe? Why not subscribe That's to right. the Everyone Razors channel? And, you know, again, before yeah. you go to bed, just hit play all. This is all I'm saying. Turn the volume off. You know, <laughs> you, most, most of you have smart TV. You could do that on your smart TV. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, go. Around the horn, Dave, we'll start with you because you're the principal owner here. What's the next step? What's what's gonna make the Cressida a minute and forty seconds better? Are you at the pinnacle? I think that um, it mostly, honestly, a lot of the stuff that we do over the years is some out of necessity. And like right now, I'm looking at a couple of things to do before New Hampshire that are <laughs> to Jay Z. I'm sorry. No. F your Jay Z. I do <laughs> actually. I'm not going to give it away. I do have a plan and for something. Jeff is Jeff has been preaching this for years, I, and I'm, this they, they have, have, they have categorically rejected him and still finished in the top ten. So I know, I yeah. <laughs> Listen to the mechanic, folks. T- Two hundred and twenty naturally aspirated horsepower could be yours. Sure. Absolutely. Two Jay Z. It's too heavy. All right. Go oh. one UZ. All right. Go I'll one UZ. Oh. It's lighter. Similar horsepower, but it's all aluminum, and it's lighter than a 2J. All right, so Aaron Aaron is saying – Right now, Donnie. Donnie just got excited listening to this. Yes, except uh, except, uh, it's going to suck more fuel, and we'll eat brakes. Yeah, and And, and tires. And tires. And so then the car owner part of me says, yeah, we can't afford it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I know that Chris – and we've lost – oh, Metzl's back – uh, Chris has suggested that you might need a little more tire. Yeah, I've talked. Actually, I've talked to Chris about it, and and um, 
that's a, again, it's in another investment in wheels and tires. Uh -huh, I've, yeah. I've talked about it. Um, the car is actually really good in the rain. We've done really well in, at, at uh, races where it's rained. And I think it's partly because of the tire. It's a narrower tire. We're only running a, what are we running? A 225, 50, 16s. Yeah. And um, by the way, we run 225s on the Honda. Well, and the Honda right. is how much lighter? Yes. Right. But you're running. Well, no, I would, I, 17s, like yeah. 17s, yeah, sure. But you know I what I mean? I think also a lot of your success in the rain is you guys are categorically patient drivers. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't get red misty. And you and Aaron both have a background in loss of traction. You're just, yeah, we don't need 100% traction. 80% is good enough. You know, with the, with the dirt track stuff. Yeah, the Cressida is really good in the rain. It's yeah. really, really, it makes us look good. <laughs> Aaron and I actually don't right. have any dirt track background. We we were around asphalt. Well, your RCs, you were dirt, right? Oh uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I had it in my head you guys were circle guys, and I thought that was just. Well, oh yeah, we but, are, not, but it's yeah. it's paved. It's paved oval, 33 degrees not, of banking. My apologies. I yeah, did wall not know stadium that. Okay. paved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. oh, all right. Yeah. All right. The, the, and the only RC dirt racing I did was some off road. I did do some dirt oval in RC, but that's that's like cheating compared to. <laughs> like dirt racing. All right, all right. So, so let's, Dave. You're still on the hot seat here. Okay. We've rejected bigger tires. Well, yeah, it's most mostly it. It's still we, we've still rejected we've rejected the V8 that Aaron wants to put in. <laughs> I wouldn't say totally rejected, but yes. Because <laughs> again, Donnie is really happy to hear you talk about the. V8. So you have a plan, but what is the plan? Is it horsepower? Is it handling? Is it tire? Is it fuel? None of your business, Jeff. That's, That's fine. <laughs> Well, I, I think for New Hampshire, we're not really going to be doing anything drastic. Why would you? And yeah, well, honestly, it's like Aaron said earlier. Every time we try to make the car faster, it ends up hurting us. Um, uh, we got to do something with a cool box. New Hampshire is not going to re really be critical because it's generally 30 degrees. Um, <laughs> I do want to fix the door bars. The door bars in the car um, are, are straight, and they're literally under your armpit. Yeah, you know, and actually, it, I, I have noticed that. Yeah, it's it's. I, I've kind of gotten used to it, but uh, I definitely want to do that, and um, I got to talk to Chris about that. I'm going to drag it down to his house when he does his next cage job, and possibly do it. But like long term, I think tires is probably going to be the next step. Hmm. Nothing, nothing really major. All right, so Aaron wants horsepower. We already heard that. Jim, what do you think oh. you would do to the Cressida? What, we'll go I back to you, Aaron, if you have another thought, by the way. I do. Um, I would stick a fuel cell in it. Get the three-stop day down to two. What? We just did an episode on why that's a dumb idea. <laughs> How many gallons do you, are you getting useful? How many gallons? When oh, does it start fuel all. serving? Really? Yeah. Huh. We, it, it's, it's like by the time you pack it, it's more than 18 gallons. I've, we've run it to where it was starving and filled it up at the pumps. I think it was in New Jersey. I ran the um, 2018, we ran it where it was starving and I had to limp it around for the last few laps. And I got over 19 gallons into that tank by the time I topped it, like really topped it off. Huh. We, yeah, we, we don't get 19 out of the Civic. We fuel starved for 49. And we have a 22, technically a 22 gallon cell. So. Right. And that's what right. Chris was talking to him about it. And he said, you don't get all 22 gallons out of a 22 gallon cell even nope. if you had a 24 gallon which the rules will allow you're not going to get all 24 right but it, i was just thinking if you know you can get you know two and a half hours out of um 16 mm -hmm. gallons if mm -hmm. you get that up to 20 could you get a full three right yeah and we know that many of the east coast races three is the magic number because then on a nine hour day you get two stops mm -hmm. yeah and uh and then, there are several six hour days where you can do one stop right and then the other thing i would look at i think the uh spoiler is adjustable mm -hmm. lay it back. maybe lower in that lay it back a little bit for for places that have nice long straights yeah, we've done that. We've played around with that. It doesn't seem yeah. to, to me, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. I was actually kicking around taking the spoiler off, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I feel like the car's a little, a little too tight. Yeah, like like some arrow work oh, might, might the car's, help. The car's a little too tight, but it's only because we have 100 pounds of water and ice in the trunk. 
I felt like it was a little tight on, <laughs> and, and, on and, even without in pra- it. In practice, you know, she seemed a lot better. Skip here because you weren't running the I don't, I don't know. If, yeah. Right. I, 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 maybe right. I, I would try laying the spoiler back. But All right, Aaron, give us, give us your dreams. What do you want to do to the Cressida? Oh, obviously the V8, it would, would be glorious, but I'm kind of with Dave on this because it's, it's every time we've tried to make the car faster, she's literally, literally put her foot up our ass. Uh, um, <laughs> we, we have a lot of uh, non-car people who listen to this show. Uh, so you suggested 1UZ, which is a Lexus 4-liter V8? 4-liter V8. 4-liter V8. Um, it would be an easy swap for us. But realistically, um, I'm kind of on the uh, – uh, a lot of it would be weight loss. Shaves, try to get some weight out of the car because she is heavy. Tire – and the rest of it, I think uh, there'd be some improvement for some like driver education. Absolutely. Uh, we, we are big proponents of driver education. I know, Jim, you recently did your first HP, second HPDE? Uh, the first one was uh, track night. Well, third. Third. So the first one was. Uh, but it had been SCCA years, right? Many, many years ago in the yeah. uh, quarter million mile WRX. That's up on the wall back there. <laughs> Because that's me autocrossing or, it. Or, or also, it. It's, yeah, see, it's hidden in one of Aaron's buddy's houses someplace. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, dri- I, driver education can absolutely help. I know that I definitely got better by going to going to the, uh, to the, to the track days and getting instruction. Uh, I, what's l- l- doing instruction right now with lead follow because of the coronavirus pandemic is – maybe not as useful, but definitely track days are, are, are very helpful because we've track talked days about teach. Yeah. Track days to teach. Yeah. Not track days, just a track day, but an instructional track day, um, HPDE with the E is education. Um, very few times in a lemons race, do you get to actually play with doing the lines? Perfect. True. And Getting that driver education with only the 12 cars or 15 cars in your group teaches you different skills that you end up using at a lemons race. So, yeah, track day for everybody. I'm just looking at it. I'd like to get Chris in the right seat just to see what little more I could get out of the car consistently. I'm not looking to set the world on fire as far as lap times. Yeah. Most of the times I could care less about lap times. I just want to know what I can get to be more consistent lap to lap. Well, and, and honestly, what it is, is it's, it's, it's knowing how to go faster through that section of turns because it will set you up for the pass, even yeah. if you're going to now make that pass offline. Uh, right. You know, uh, faster down the straight is because you're doing 9, 10, 11 better. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah, speaking. Speaking of right seat, could you move the cool suit cooler forward? Well, that's what the plan. Take is. it out of the trunk. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a Get smaller that out cooler. Of the back end. It's got to be a smaller cooler though. That big, I've I've looked at moving that big ass cooler to the to the. Yeah, the cooler's front, huge. And and it's like um, uh, uh, where where it can fit is like hard to get to like if you had to add water to it so definitely gonna talk to chris and i'm uh, gonna probably do the same thing he's talking about doing with the civic yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that that, i think that'll be uh that'll be good because i did notice that the car handled better when the fuel load got lighter yeah it had less weight back there okay Mm -hmm. yeah yeah interesting that's that's about when i set my faster lap on saturday was once the fuel load starting to light started lightening up. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's every single car is going to go faster when it's a little lighter. Um, well, right, but that's more as far as rotating through the corners because mm-hmm. in practice on Friday we didn't have the cooler in the trunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. So, putting all that weight in the trunk, she actually had a she lost a little bit of her turn in. I thought. H- and... Hamsa can correct me or all the other engine nerds out there. Yes, I'm talking about you, Chris Egan. I believe you're suggesting that it had a lower polar moment without all of that weight behind the axle. I just wanted to say polar moment. I really actually. Sure. 
<laughs> where, where is Jeff uses a term he doesn't understand on the I understand. That's what I was say. <laughs> right. Where's my stick? I'll where's, spin it right where's now. Where's Jeff tells a story that goes nowhere? Uh, that's, that's <laughs> Mine actually says mental. Oh, uh, shucks. Oh, and, 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 and if he actually tells that story, I get bingo. <laughs> Describe polar moment. Never mind. We're not. Gonna Never finish. mind. The show is long. Extremely long. Yes. A- anything right. else? Sum it up for us. Somebody from the Crescent Group. I don't know. Sum it up. Um, don't step on your wiener. Don't step on your wiener. Have fun. That's uh, honestly our main objective is to run all day and run every day. Because if you know all the races that we've run, there's only twice that we've had like DNFs where we didn't finish. And only one time was a mechanical failure. And, and that mechanical uh, failure was like an overheating differential, right? I mean, yeah, it's not even it, something it, that was normal or could it be was predicted. A change differential and it's, it, yeah, it just, it ran too hot, cooked the oil in it. We put a unknown spare in for the next, you know, for the afternoon and then the next day and it pretty much did the same thing. So, um, I added a diff cooler to it before this race and uh, was a, we actually put a gauge in it as well. So that way we could uh, see what it was cooler doing. temperature gauge. Wow. Yes. That's, 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 yeah. that's, that's how easy the Cressida is to drive. Part of my shift Saturday, I was experimenting with blower on versus blower off watching the gauge as opposed to paying attention to what I was doing. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> love Screw you guys. You guys. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. Oh. Mental. All right. What do we got left in the show? I'm lost and dazed and confused. All right. My- so we're, 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 this is our little thing. Uh, you know, Jim doesn't listen. Uh, I, I, I think Aaron. <laughs> hey, I watch on YouTube now. I, I think Aaron might, and occasionally Uncle Dave. Pays I do. Attention. But it's called it's called on the spot, and it's uh, I'm going to ask you a question. You get you get one answer and. Uh, humility off on this one. Feel free to answer the question immediately what comes to mind. But we talked about this last week. Um, the pointy end of the field is getting very pointy. And there are just some really great teams that run well. Uh, you know, Bazinga, the, the Johnson's Toyota guys, uh, all of those teams. So who's, who's, due, for, who's due for a win? Uh, and, and stick with the, uh, the East Coast teams that you know. And that's why I say, turn the humility off. Who's due for an overall now? Me. Bam. All right. So Aaron just comes <laughs> straight out of the gate. Says, humility says, off. Me. Me. Crescent, is, Crescent <laughs> has got it, and I don't think you're going to find any objections. No. No, because you didn't object last week when somebody brought it up. No, I didn't. Dave, Jim? Jim, go ahead. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um. No, really, because like I listened last week. It's not fair. <laughs> I, I listened. To, I watched this show on YouTube. Remember? So I mean, you guys had great ideas, and I'm trying to think of one that's not one of those. Nobody said Civic is a repeat. Yeah, no, because because they <laughs> all know us. Well, <laughs> no, I I think you guys have pushed that to the edge, and if you tried to repeat, especially twice in one year, it would blow up. Yeah, I, I think or, you guys or, have or a little refining to do yeah. before you can get the repeat. Like, it, it, it's it's not really that hard to do. You guys just got to get that fuel burn under control. The fuel burn. There's something going on with the fuel burn. Yeah. We're definitely gonna work yeah. on that. If Chris was here, he could tell us because I know he's been working on it. We'll have to wait till next week to hear about that. Well, I know some of that fuel burn was externally motivated, but still. Yeah. It's, uh, All right. So, so I got All right, I have, who's so who's so gonna can win? I say the Z that's in Jeff's yard. <laughs> Yes. Oh. If it yes. gets to the track, it's a win. Wow. It could, it, it, it could win. Or goes all of his mathematical training and goes for that, the unicorn wish. The, <laughs> Jeff's yeah, it's mower it's is kind of the unicorn wish already. Uh, That's true. I, I am very impressed with Bazinga and what they're doing with that chassis. And I yeah. think a 4.8 liter yeah. LS could do something in that car. No, no, no doubt. No doubt. All right. So I got two votes for the Cressida and one vote for the Z. I I actually think the Z would pull it off before, uh, before the the Z actually runs well enough. Uh, 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 Go ahead, Dave. No, I was going to, I was going to say, I was holding off because I was going to say, I think the Civic's got a shot at a repeat because the pressure's off now. 
you guys aren't going to try and that's when it's going to come you, when you yeah, all these years you guys trying idea. all these years you guys trying you're trying so hard and stuff happens whether it's self-inflicted or a wire and a tire or whatever now you're going to go out there and just run and so you're going to just you're just going to shut up and drive and at the end of the right. day that car is going to be up front as long so as we adopt a Cressida mentality right if you are that's driving. Yeah. We, we, we've only done as well as we have because we weren't trying. Hmm. We're just trying if, to run. If we were actually trying, there'd be boot prints on our wieners left and right. This, this is why we love Uncle Dave. All right. So, <laughs> do, do you remember when we were down in CMP and, like, we just were not trying with the Cressida and they finished ninth or something? <laughs> it was at, like, we took at, oh, extra... Road was it Road Atlanta? I thought it was yeah, CMP. Yeah, we've never been to we've... CMP with it. Oh. Yeah, we it was and, it was, and like it was like everybody drives on Sunday. We had like six driver's <laughs> shifts and finished ninth. <laughs> <laughs> with you guys finished ninth with that car. I wasn't part of it. So I can't mm-hmm. t- I don't want to say we. <laughs> but I mean it was it was that's, fantastic. Uh, yeah, that that's that's valid. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess we'll guys, we, we we love you. Um yeah. we talked about some, you know, we we joke about you bad blood. I know. No, we joke about bad blood and stuff like that, but I think it falls into the overarching concept of finding what matters inside the turmoil. And that, I think that applies to everyone's life right now. Um, I, I don't feel like it's a good weekend if I don't get uncle Dave and Aaron around. Uh, yeah. I missed the hell out of you last year. So it was, it's, it's always just fun having you guys around and uh, I'm thank you so much for being on the show and thanks for coming out and being part of the team. Does anybody have anything to plug? Anybody got a social media account or no? No. I don't have no. anything to plug. <laughs> don't follow me. I think Monday nights. Ray, Monday nights. race with us on Monday. Yes, race Monday on nights. Monday. Z one or. Yes. Oh, what, what's what's even the have password, Jeff? Uh, it's uh, our favorite breaks. Stuh, stuh, Bubba Wallace. Yeah, there you go. Damn, so close to bingo. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we can't say it. You had to tell us. You can ask me what my favorite breaks are. What are your favorite breaks, Jeff? ST43 by Ray Bestas. Mm. They're bingo. Say it. Nope. Didn't get no. it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. I got a bad card. I, I, I don't even play anymore because I'm just so horrible at it. I have let's, a lot of cursing Chrissy on mine. Yeah, so. that's not helpful. <laughs> uh, let's get to the end of it. Thank you for downloading us. And thank you for joining us, Cressida crew. Uh, we, didn't get, we didn't get a chance to have uh, the dishwashing fairy, Steve, on. Uh, Because I'm not sure he knows how to use a computer. I I don't know. (laughs) Um, We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a winner, a race winner, especially if you're as chillax as these guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It is totally free. Or if you're in YouTube land, Wait, I got to point this way. Which way? How this plays out. You got to point more up. I, I, I only, well, I, I, whatever. It's well, there. Right. It's there. Yeah. If, if I don't talk way. quick, it won't go. It won't be there because it won't be there until we're done. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars. Tell us why. Push play on the YouTube channel and then go to bed. Uh, if you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or Twitters at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless there is no shiny side, then just keep those green wheels. Why does the crest have green wheels? They were cheap. They were on sale. No, there. You didn't paint them. They actually came green. They were on sale. Clearance. <laughs> because it, it, green. All right. Keep the green wheels down. Thanks, guys. Thank you.